ready to go racing. Round three of the NASCAR Cup Series for 2021 Green Flag. Push to the inside for third. Harvick draws a bead on leader Joey Logano. Already three wide down, halfway down that back straightaway continues here off of turn four. Four wide in the back. And the reason we love this racetrack, as a race car driver, you're looking for that. You see some of these teams back mired in traffic. This place has options. You can go, I watch them right there off the bat in turn one, three wide. You're seeing huge momentum when you come off those outside lanes. And one thing I want to point out, even though we saw Christopher Bell was the pole sitter because of Denny Hamlin's issues, the 22 on the outside of Joey Logano was the control car already. That's cost Christopher Bell quite a few positions by getting behind on the start. B.J. McLeod already on pit road as Logano comes around to lead lap two by about four car lengths from Harvick. Very important to keep in mind on these restarts, especially early on. Yes, you've got to make passes. You've got to make those moves. Clean air is so important. The other thing you've got to keep in the back of your mind is you need these tires on a long run. Very, very difficult to try to not over push your car right off the start and blow the tires off of it. Matt Benedetto coming hard. Got to run all the way up to the bumper of the number eight of Tyler Reddick, but could go no further. And the 24 also on the move, William Byron. And Mike, when you're in the back of the field like this coming through there, you just go wherever the car in front of you is. It You're looking for clean air. But if you're up front as our leaders, here's Joey Logano, Kevin Harvey coming after Joey Logano, you're actually trying to figure out when do I move up the racetrack? When does the groove move up where I don't start to lose time by using up my tires on the bottom? And also, if you're Joey Logano, that's exactly what you're watching him do. He moved up, and you can see, you know, he's going to go up. As he gets, if that car gets bigger in his mirror, he's going to move up and block him for sure. Boys, Denny Hamlin up 10 positions since the start. Had to start in the back due to a unapproved adjustment after inspection. And just ahead of them, pretty nice battle going on between DiBenedetto and the aid of Tyler Reddick. Oh, man, Kevin Harvick moved up. Looked like he was a threat for taking the lead away from Joey Logano. But here comes Penske teammate to Joey Logano, Brad Keselowski, making a charge. Exactly what I was talking about. Joey moved up, corrected his line, took the air off of Kevin Harvick's car, got tight, and then all of a sudden here you got a mirror full of Keselowski. Michael McDowell. Started sixth, trying to make the pass for fifth. Here's the season's two winners so far. Still blows my mind, Jeff, you know, to think these cars haven't been on the track. No practice, no qualifying, nothing. Literally first laps on the track, you see them three and four wide going for passes and making those moves. Second place, Kozlowski on the bottom, and Harvick has gone up to the top. It's Clint, to your point, in what other sport do they do that? Do you just walk out on the field and either throw the first pitch, kick off the ball, tip it off, or drop the puck? Nowhere. <laughs> There's no warm-up or anything. You know, when I'm going to a football game and watching the Kansas City Chiefs, you're out there in the field warming up, practicing kicks, throws, all that stuff. Receivers are running everywhere. None of that. You're in the motorhome eating potato chips. They call you and say, hey, it's go time. Come on, boy. Well, it's go time for Brad didn't practice Kiss near enough. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, thank you, Larry. Who gave him a microphone Sing. today? I've already, I'd take it a beating today. Larson already making his moves coming up through the field, going after Michael McDowell for seven. Like you were saying, Jeff, he's forced to run the bottom. You know, if, if I've got Kyle Larson in my mirror, I know where he wants to go. He's wanting to run that outside. You know he's going to be capable of it and good up there. I'm not going to give him that option. I'm going to try to take it from him. Well, Michael McDowell gave him that option, opened up the door, bringing along Ricky Stenhouse Jr. right behind him. Probably second guessing that as well. <laughs> that moves Larson to seven. Whoa, Closing big time loose. You see how loose yep. Kyle Larson got right there. That's what I was talking about. Got to be careful not to overcook those tires. Get them hot. They'll go away. You'll lose lap time. Kurt Busch going after Kevin Harvick, making it stick down on the bottom, slides up in front of him. 
I, I've been noticing the four car, Kevin Harvick, the back end slide out a good bit. I don't know if he just ran a little bit too hard there at the beginning, trying to chase down Logano, or if his car is super free right now while the sun's out. Here's Jamie on our leader. Joey Logano told me he does not want to run the top side of this racetrack. The only time is when the risk is worth it. That's the end of stages and the end of this race. They also just told him that his teammate Brad Keselowski is running one groove off the wall and it's faster. And you see Brad starting to close. Four tenths of a second is the gap. Nine laps complete in Homestead. Joey Logano has led them all. NASCAR Cup Racing on Fox is sponsored by Ford, built Ford Brown, and by Progressive Insurance. Save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. 14 laps complete, and Fords have led them all. Here's today's Ford Performance Track Facts. The Blue Oval brand has won eight times at Homestead, Miami, most by any manufacturer. Joey Logano, the last in 2018. And here's the lead change between Penske teammates, Keselowski and Logano. Remember them two weeks ago in the last lap of the Daytona 500. Team owner Roger Penske was asked this week, do you sit down with these two? And he responded in a very Penske-like way, saying, no, before Talladega, we're going to sit down with all of our drivers and talk about what do we do in this situation, what's best for the team, what's best for the individuals, We'll, well see think, how it's handled. I, Mike, I think a little internal rivalry is not a bad thing. You know, these guys are competitors, and, and if you're running good like these two are right now, you want them to push one another. You just don't want them wrecking one another. So <laughs> yeah. it's a fine line. It's a very good point. <laughs> good point. Kurt Busch closing on Joey Logano. I believe Busch is the only driver in this race who won here on the old Homestead configuration. When this was a true four-cornered racetrack, kind of a smaller Indianapolis, if you will. Now, his younger brother Kyle 
How's his race going, Regan? Well, Mike, he's moved up eight spots, actually nine spots now to 15th from where he started, but not happy with that race car yet. Take a listen. This is off on the extreme plowing height on the back road. So you heard him make a comment, not even close to Sim. That's how they these guys can go out there and run hard laps and why the teams can get the cars set up so closely at the beginning of these races is that simulation that they use back at the race shop. But it sounds to me like whatever was going on in their simulation not correlated to this racetrack here today for Kyle Busch. Very good point. We're on board with Christopher Bell right here. I was just going to say kind of seems to be the trend for all the uh, Gibbs cars right now. Um, you know, Bell starting on the front row on the point there and already slid back to ninth. Again, still haven't had a chance to work on these cars, get a pit stop in, make some adjustments. And well, one pit, uh, Joe Gibbs racing cars running pretty good right here, Mark Trex Jr. And they need to. Half of the Joe Gibbs team has not led a lap this year, has not finished in the top 10 this year, and that would be Kyle Busch and Martin Truex. Well, you, you know that's going to change. <laughs> yeah, just you're not going to keep time. those two down. Truex's last four races here. A win, two seconds, and a twelfth. And what I look at, Mike, when you say that, is today is going to be a great marker for us to look at where are these teams, where are these drivers at right now in 2021. In the aero department, I, I, you know, I listened to that comment and immediately thought aero. This is a racetrack where you've got to have downforce. You got to have grip. Makes those tires not slip around, and it's just sheer speed. If you're struggling here, you hear those comments with Kyle Busch and things like that. Sometimes you can get that aero pointed with some adjustments. Sometimes it's a body aero issue. Third place here as they uh, lap past James Davison. Kurt Busch and Kyle Larson. This is all happening about three seconds back of the lead. Well, remember, these two used to be teammates at Chip Ganassi Racing, so a lot of notes shared back and forth over those years that they were teammates, especially right here at this racetrack. We've seen Kyle Larson run so good in the past, and we're seeing Kurt Busch run really well here today. I tell you, the thing that I like about Kyle Larson right there is he's able to move and run on the bottom of the racetrack. As this track, the tires wear out, you've got to widen it up, make this thing bigger. That's why you see him on the outside. The preferred groove, he, you can see him fall back in line right there. He's wanting to run the outside, but you can't drive through him, can you, Jeff? No, you, you, you really can't. I thought that Kyle was actually really nice to Kurt right there. Yeah. I think he thought his car was good enough around the bottom to be able to get up in front of him, but he probably should have pushed the issue a little bit sooner off of that corner to complete that pass on Kurt Busch. On board here with Kevin Harvick. Listen to the throttle. And third place side by side again, Kurt Busch and uh, Kyle Larson. Two Fords, then three Chevrolets, including Ricky Stenhouse in fifth, and then Truex, the leading Toyota, in sixth. Isn't that frustrating, Clint? When, uh -huh. You know, you were so close, inches away from making a pass happen, and it doesn't happen. Kurt, you know, fights back on the outside, and now it's going to take him several laps to set this pass back up. And it's kind of the blind spot, right? You're coming off of turn four. The elevation and the banking is higher. You can't quite see that car. You're just begging for that spotter. Come on, say it. I want to hear it clear. <laughs> You know, guys, we're about two laps away from what's going to be that competition caution. And I talked about this in the pre-race. If I was one of these crew chiefs, knowing that caution's coming, I wanted him to get all he could out of that race car to see where we stack up on the short run on fresh tires, the long run on the older tires, and to move that car around, see where it handles, to what adjustments I need to think about making as we move forward. Keselowski and Logano have split the laps led 12 apiece right now. This is for 11. Austin Dillon in the three, Chase Elliott in the nine. I have a feeling a lot of big adjustments coming yeah. up at this competition caution. Ricky Stenhouse holding fifth, five seconds off the lead. Yeah, but he's really close in on the Larson and Bush battle right here ahead of him. So nice job. Another guy has some dirt background, Clint. Yeah, absolutely. And laying some really good lap times down. But I'd said that in the pre-race show. You got to look for these dirt cars, guys. You know, when I think of running this racetrack, the old cushions up there on the outside. Cat like Ricky Stenhouse right up his alley. 
So 25 laps complete. All green. Brad Keselowski leads 13. Joey Logano leads 12. This will be the competition yellow. Something we don't have in our Clint, take Clint's money game. No Just yellow flag there. Take it already, baby. 10,000 to stage two. All you got to do, free app. Get on there. Put your picks in. See what it's going to be. Win my money. Free to play. So uh, why not download the FoxBet app? And here are the questions. You, if They're all multiple guess. Okay? Yeah. This can't be hard. <laughs> I tell you what, the biggest move is It's not hard to be... take Clint's money. I that's tell you, it's saying. not hard to look at that picture of me and <laughs> not laugh. My <laughs> gosh, that's terrible. But uh, <laughs> the biggest hey. mover, that's the one I like the most. You know, with a lot of these teams, a lot of good cars starting in the back, there's going to be some serious, uh, you know, muscle being flexed coming up through the pack. TV will age a man. Clint. Oh, <laughs> man, look like look at me. Look at me. <laughs> Well, you, you just are, you're old. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Garrett Smithley earns the free pass. Thought it was a little early for that, but there we are. And the pits will be open this time. Mike, even Clint could be a crew chief for this race. <laughs> just four <laughs> tires every time. Not even a debate. Oh, I love it. I love it. Tyler Reddick's moved up 10 spots. Uh, Matt DiBenedetto has moved up 11 in the early going. And Ross Chastain, 13 positions, 13 for Alex Bowman as well. Regan. Martin Truex Jr. moved up three spots from his starting position to six. That race car just started coming to him about five laps ago. He started to get happy with that car. It's a little loose off, meaning the back wants to slide out too much on corner exit. Jamie? Kyle Larson, watch for him to have a little bit longer pit stop. They're going to put a packer in the left front. They're just going to do it now. Get it out of the way early. Air pressure adjustment as well. The one, Kurt Busch says he's a little bit loose into turn one, otherwise pretty good. Meanwhile, the Penske teammates, Brad Kozlowski on the right, Joey Logano on the left. Air pressure adjustments in the rear wheels for both of them. It's a battle off pit road, Mike. That it is. Here's your Ram race off pit road. Won by Kozlowski. Bush picks up a spot. Logano drops one. Harvick up three. And Kyle Larson loses five. First caution of the day, competition yellow in Homestead.
Joey Logano won a championship here when Homestead Miami was the final race of the season 2018 as Brad Keselowski did in 2012. Team Penske continues to lead every one of 29 laps so far today. Kirk Busch will line up on the inside of row one. Logano with Harvick in row two. Truex and Stenhouse. And on the opening start of the race, Daniel Suarez got a bit of damage to his number 99. We'll show you how that happened. Yeah, maybe a little contact with Bubba Wallace. <laughs> If we get a chance right now, we're ready to go green. All right, lane choice on the outside for our leader. Green flag. Still there, still on strike bumper, still on strike bumper. You're half ahead of yourself, barely hanging at your bumper. Two lanes down, he's being shoved. Still there, still there, the one. Two ahead of both of your helpers. Two ahead, yours is going to get there quicker. Two ahead, still inside. Still inside, one back both lanes behind. One back to both. Still inside, three quarter to both lanes. Still there, door. Still inside quarter, still there. Joey's trying to get inside of him. Still there, middle lane. Joey's gonna be inside on the bottom. That's Coleman Bumper, Presley, Brad Keselowski's spotter. As Keselowski leads, and uh, one car, I think it was Truex, was backing up straight through the middle of the field there in turn four. So important when you're going into three and four. Kurt Busch, he, hit that bottom and he didn't hook the bottom. It's very, very tricky down there when you get into three and four. I was telling myself, you better hook that bottom and he didn't washed up. Obviously, it was three wide by the time they got off. Jamie. Joey Logano second right now, worrying about what he's doing, but he's also thinking about what his teammate Brad Kozlowski is doing. Brad ran hard on the way out. That would be helpful. Had to go hard out even if he's got him. Yeah, and a lot of times when you're coming off pit road, you know you're going to be the leader. You kind of check up so you don't speed on pit road, but for those guys behind you, they want you to run it all the way out so that they can then battle with some of the drivers that they're racing on pit road. Ricky Stenhouse doing a little bottom feeding there in turn four, and they were three wide there for a moment at corner exit. Hey, what? Stenhouse has a nice race car today and going to try to take advantage of it. Logano wants the lead back. He led the first 12 circuits. Kozlowski in the two has been out in front for the last 21. Let's go back and show you what happened to Martin Truex there in turn number four. Well, you got Stenhouse on the inside lane, hooking that white line like you talked about, and the 24s at the outside of Mark Truex Jr., he just lost the air because he had a car in front of him also and took all the downforce off the car. Worst case scenario, <laughs> he had cars in front of him three wide, he was three wide, no air at all. How about William Byron right now, up in eighth position all the way from 31st? Byron yeah. settles in at sixth. Behind uh, Chris Buescher. Remember, he's he's won an Xfinity race and championship here in a great battle right down to the finish here. So he gets a, a, around this racetrack pretty darn good. Kyle Larson tucks in ahead of Kurt Busch by a very narrow margin there. They were almost bumper to bumper. And Stenhouse keeps coming. Coming after Harvick and Logano. And you saw that little bobble by Kevin Harvick. That's what I'm talking about. We saw that car was a little bit loose. They tend to trim their car out a little bit more, not put all the downforce in it, which you would not think would work at this racetrack. But I just wonder if that's the case here because Kevin Harvick's car is dancing around a bit in the rear. Clint, the way the sun is playing peekaboo with this racetrack, it's bright sun. No, it's in the shade. No, the corner's in the sun. What's, what's that do to you? Oh, it throws complete havoc to you. You're slipping and sliding in one end. You see shade down here in three and four, sun in one and two. You can't figure out what to do, but definitely drastically changes the handling on your car. Jamie. 
Kevin Harvick has been so loose so far in this race, saying no grip whatsoever on that stop. They did two rounds down on the track bar, air pressure and tires. And Rodney Childers, his crew chief, said, hang in there. The track is coming to us. It's getting better, especially with the cloud cover you guys were speaking of. Well, and that sort of goes back to what we were talking about. If they're saying the track's going to come to them because the cloud cover, or maybe this race ends under you know the lights, which it will get darker here, that that track as it cools down will gain grip and that's what they're banking on a little more trimmed out maybe it's going to show some speed later in this race hey give credit where credit's due how about chris busher holding a pretty wheel in this 17 car running up front with the big boys he is headed to the front busher in third and teammate newman in ninth both the roush cars in the top 10 as brad keselowski leads in homestead after 38 laps The NASCAR Cup Series on Fox is sponsored by Ram Trucks, Motor Trends Truck of the Year for the third year in a row. And by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. Brad Keselowski leading at 43 laps, but last time by, quickest cars on the racetrack were Kyle Larson and William Byron and Chris Buescher in second. Here's Byron. Making the move on Logano, heck third a, place. Heck of a charge. And what I'm seeing is that 24 car is able to run the bottom groove here. It's probably not going to complete the pass unless Joey wants to give it to him. No, no it's not going to happen. No. Uh, no, no. His car is a little bit better on the bottom longer. That's why this 24 car is able to come up to the next car and make the pass. Eventually, he's going to have to move to that top groove. Jamie, you got something on the 24? Yeah, Jeff, I was actually talking to William about today's race and his plan, and he said, all right, we're starting 31st. By the time we have our competition caution lap 25, I want to drive through the field. Well, he did that. He also told me his main focus at this racetrack is to run on the bottom. He said this race will be won on the bottom under the lights. So that was their focus, and it's paying off early. Well, he is one of the two quickest cars on the racetrack right now. Uh, another is Chris Busher. He is looking for his first top 10 finish at Miami. And Busher in second. Regan. 
Well, it's such a strong run for Chris Bursher so far today. Crew Chief Luke Lambert said this team had to make some very difficult offseason decisions and some conversations that were tough to have. They had so many areas that they needed to work on. It was tough to prioritize. Whatever they picked, they prioritized right because this car looks good right now, Mike. Let me tell you who is not moving forward, and that is Denny Hamlin. Slated to start on the pole, had to start, was uh, moved to the rear by NASCAR inspectors, and uh, he's in 20th spot right now, right about where he restarted. My AC has quit. Feel like I'm losing power. What's voltage? Copy that. You're good off the back side, Dan. Let's hit your boat when you can. We're good there. Yeah, back the gas. I'm jumping. Now, Hamlin's lap times are competitive. They are right up there with the leaders right now. Not sure if that's resolved itself, though. Well, it's never a good sign when the air conditioner's going out. Usually there's going to be more things coming down <laughs> yeah. the road. Fifth place here, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Kurt Busch. And for the lead, here comes Busher. I tell you what, Rash Fenway Racing is, is having a heck of a start to this race. Newman's come up to eighth. Now Chris Busher going to the lead. Yeah, I was looking at Newman's lap times, Jeff, and they're as fast as, as Busher is, fast as cars. Oh, Keselowski track. fought back. I think that slower yep. car had a little bit of an impact on the downforce, allowing Chris Busher to get back in the throttle. He just wasn't able to complete that pass. Yeah, Cody Ware in his first cup start at Homestead, first Homestead start. There is uh, the cat in usually the hat, Jack Roush, who owns the 17 and the 6. Where's the Wienermobile? Ninth place for Newman. <laughs> That's just fun to say. It is. <laughs> Larry. You know, guys, I think a change that Roush Fenway Racing made during the offseason, Jimmy Finning, longtime championship crew chief for Kurt Busch back in 2004, he's always looked after their super speedway program. This year, they've kind of put him in charge of the entire program, and I think we're seeing the result right here in the first race at the conventional racetrack. Absolutely, Larry. There <laughs> Somebody's lit a fire under those two. And it's a good sign of what's to come. Yep. You need to be, if you're going on a racetrack like this, old war out surface, Jeff, mile and a half racetrack, this is the bread and butter of our sport. If you're good here, you're going to be a force to be reckoned with every week. Alex Bowman quietly up nine spots since the restart. He was one of the four cars that had to go to the back of the field on the start for uh, unapproved adjustments. And uh, Alex up to eighth place. And working on Ricky Stenhouse. Yeah, there's Alex Bowman in that 48 Ally Chevrolet. Running down the Tide Chevrolet, Kroger Tide Chevrolet, of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. As we see this battle up front still heating up between those two Fords. All right, so why doesn't Brad just say, look, you want it that bad? You go ahead. You lead for a while. <laughs> Why not? Well, well, oh, your, car, your car drives so much better when it's out front in that clean air. Go. And if he can maybe make Chris Busher heat up those tires by trying to pass him, it actually might wear the tires down a little bit, build some air pressure up in him. He might be able to maintain this lead. Hey, he's a competitor. You want to lead every lap. You want to win the race. You want to be oh, the guy. Well, wow. right now, he, the only one heating up the tires is Brad Keselowski as he slid that right rear through turns three and four. Look at the run Busher got on him because of that. Oh, he lost all his momentum. He was slideways off turn four. <laughs> and, and right now, at this point in the race, I do see guys being a little more conservative and not running right up against the fence. Here comes Busher to the inside of Keselowski. You're almost going to have to make a slide job Sort of side drop down the back straightaway, carry that momentum in the corner, and then slide up in front of Keselowski. Get up, get up, get nope, up. No, not it's gonna not happen. happen. <laughs> Chris Busher trying to no, lead. Oh, get didn't. up! Oh, oh! For the first time at Homestead, and he does. Big push. You saw Keselowski jump in the throttle in the back end, stepped out on a little bit. Nice I'm saying it's such a, you know, when you're coming off that corner, Mike, you're just waiting. The best thing you could ever hear is that spotter finally say, clear, all clear, move up. What a run, what a day this kid is having. Jack Roush trying to get his first top five here since 2012. Chris Busher, the new leader.
Yeah. Fifty-eight laps complete. Riding along with Bubba Wallace in the DoorDash Cam. Exciting news this weekend. NASCAR and DoorDash officially announced a multi-year partnership. They are now the official on-demand delivery platform. So Fox welcomes DoorDash to the NASCAR family. Good. We need some. How does that work? Yes. Give me some DoorDash up here. Do you, uh, they sent it? Do you need a burger? What are you going to have? They sent a discount code to your phone. All right. I don't know what I want, but you're making me hungry. <laughs> Martin Truex seems to have settled at 10th. He uh, passed Kevin Harvick in the last lap or two. Harvick in free fall uh, has dropped from third to 11th. Truex seems to have stabilized at 10th. It's hard to say it's all splinter when I have no grip at all. You know what I mean, Dave? Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. I know, James, but I'm 11th now. You know what I mean? I know. We need to be better on the stop. Now, I think I heard him say he wanted to be better on the front. So when those pressures are a little bit low coming off of pit road, the car wants to squish down. There's just not as much spring rate in those tires. So if you're a little bit low, that splitter can hit the racetrack and you just can't go anywhere. You just cannot carry the speed into the corner off the corner. But I'll tell you what, right now, that 19, one of the fastest cars on the track. Yeah, but Chevy's. later on in the race, you're going to have trouble. You know, on those restarts, when the money's on the line, you got to be able to take off. And Bowman, he is coming, coming fast. Goes by Kyle Larson. Whatever that adjustment was, the Packer, whatever on the five car, I don't know if that helped him out. Maybe it'll help him later, but right now, that car's just not as good as it was earlier. Alex Bowman, that lap was the second fastest car on the track to our leader, Chris Buescher. And, and in traffic. <laughs> well, you talked about adjustments right there, Jeff. It's so important to the chemistry. You know, you got a new team here, new driver, crew chief. They've got to work on that. When that cat's in there saying, hey, I'm loose or I'm tight, you got to be able to tell how tight or how loose he is by his demeanor, his attitude, and, and his, you know, his voice. It's what you have. Xfinity fastest lap. Last time by, Martin Truex over Chris Buescher, Alex Bowman third. Kurt Busch, William Byron. And, and that's typically what we see. You're hitting the splitter. You're not able to get going up uh, you know, in the early part of a run. As we see here, change for fifth place. Alex Bowman going by Joey Logano. But that's where the long run speed comes because that splitter now is perfect uh, you know, in, in how it uh, co is correlated to the racetrack. It's, that front end is getting the maximum amount of downforce right now. And Jeff and Clint, I talked to several crew chiefs this week, and they told me the biggest challenge is keeping that splitter height right when the loads change so much and the pace slows down. So watch here as Martin Truex uh, makes this pass for eighth place. You can see, he tried to make the pass in the bottom, turns one and two. The momentum comes off the top in the 47. Now the 47 opens up the door, the 19 of Truex goes right on by on the outside. We are under caution. James Davison's day goes up in smoke. Put it and, out. And flames, yeah, put it out. Maybe get out. He's on fire, boys. We had thought, uh, based on Larry's advice, that the teams could go all the way to the end of stage one, which will come at late lap 80 without having to make a stop for fuel and tire. Hey, Larry, I'm going to go with uh, four tires on this. I need some tires. Okay. Well, good call. Good right. call. Well, the, the fall off is over two seconds from those fresh tires, the old tires. So I don't care if they run a half a lap under, under the pace car lap. They're coming to pit road. All right, let's check with Larry for today's right combination, sponsored by Subway. Well, Mike, this is a combination that's not been together a long time. Brad Keselowski, his crew chief, Jeremy Bullins, it's only their second season together in the Cup Series. They won four races last year, finished second in the points. They also won 14 Xfinity Series races together a few years ago. And how about this for the mile and a half? Last year in 11 races on mile and a half tracks, top 10 in 10 of those 11 i'd say that's a subway right combination especially for mile and a half tracks that is a good record indeed 
James Davison, it appears, will join Timmy Hill out of the race. And we'll double check, but I think Garrett Smithley is once again the free pass. Dent Wizard. We needed them boys <laughs> last week, Jeff. <laughs> There was no no dent wizard was fixing that. <laughs> <laughs> what about the mirror hanging off? All right, let's see. Will the pits be open this time? Uh, no, they have to get some uh, track sweeping equipment and speedy dry put down. Friday nights on Fox, it's WWE SmackDown. Here's Michael Cole with a preview for what's ahead this week. Daniel Bryan has the opportunity to face Roman Reigns at Fastlane for the Universal Championship if he can defeat Jey Uso in a brutal steel cage match. It's an all-new Friday night SmackDown, live at 8 Eastern on Fox. Here at Homestead Miami Speedway, 14 laps to go in stage one under the second caution of the day. The first was the competition caution, and this one, uh, one of those expensive parts let go under the hood of James Davison's car. Denny Hamlin hasn't been able to get to the front today. My hose fell off my helmet. That's why I have no AC. That'll do it. Yep. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I fixed it. It was not electrical. <laughs> You know, we called that the caution. You, you said those expensive parts. Oh, Barry, Barry Wright used to tell us that's an oil pan failure is what happened there. <laughs> Did not contain. Now, there's that air hose. And I'm telling you, we're, we're on a pretty warm day here in South Florida. It's hot and it's humid, and these guys are working hard sliding that car around the racetrack. I'm going to be honest with you guys. There's no way I'd have said that on the radio. <laughs> no way I'd have said that. I just would have <laughs> fixed the problem and not said another word. I'm just wondering, how, how's it feel up here in the booth? Hey, it's Clint. nice. Slipping and sliding around that hot surface is a lot of fun out there, too. Bet your butt they're having a blast out there on this racetrack. Some so of them. Clint, I don't you know. just let Maybe that crew no, chief worry himself sick the entire race about what's going on with the electrical system. You would not tell him your hose fell <laughs> no off. No chance you're going to find that out, Larry. Now, Larry, I want to know when the hose fell off the helmet and he got hot, it seemed like the horsepower went away too underneath the hood. How does that relate? Yeah, I can't connect those dots. <laughs> I just can't connect them. I, I don't imagine they put that in the sim, do they? <laughs> Uh, fixed it, guys. <laughs> You're not going to believe this. And the horsepower's <laughs> back, too. Everything's fixed. Chris Buescher, everything going his way today. He has led his first laps at Homestead Miami Speedway and now has led uh, 15 of them, which ties the most he has ever led in a cup race, which was 15 laps at Talladega. Got that Mustang rolling today. So they will open pit road this time, even though there's a big snail's trail of speedy dry down there. 13 to go in stage one. Fords have led every lap today. Keslowski, Busher, Logano. It's feeding time. Here's Regan. Chris Buescher, your leader, very happy with that race car right now. It's just a little bit too tight on entry, meaning he can't get it to turn like he wants to when he pushes or when he turns the steering wheel. They're going to make minimal adjustments to that race car. He has been very, very pleased and very descriptive about how good it is. Jamie? William Byron in the 24 comes in second, said this thing is awesome. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment. They already did that in a four tire stop. The one of Kurt Busch said the air pressure adjustment last time in the right rear didn't help any. So they're going back on that and it's four tires as well. Meanwhile, the Penske teammates down on pit road, the 22 lost a little bit of turn, a four tire stop here and his teammate Brad Kozlowski and you see Denny Hamlin in taking an extra long stop there. Joey Logano, Martin Truex, the big winners, along with Kevin Harvick and Chase Elliott on this round of pit stops. There's the race off pit road.
little Cuban sandwich. That uh, looks pretty good, fellas. Oh, yeah. Send one of those out. Yeah, door dash that thing right up <laughs> <Yeah>. to us. <laughs> All right. The choose rule comes into play for the first time this season because it is not used at Daytona, Talladega, or the road courses. On uh, every restart, each driver gets a chance to choose inside or outside lane. And these guys back here stalled out, stacking up, panning out, trying to see what's going on. They're waiting. They're listening to their spotter. Count them down. All right, five cars on the bottom, five cars on the outside. You know, you got to know which lanes, because there's a lot of things going on. You want to be in one lane or the other, depending on how your car's handling, how you're doing on these restarts. But how many can I advance a couple rows by going to the outside or the bottom? By the way, you know, we've seen this over the years for a long time on short track racing all over the country. I love that NASCAR has brought this to these mile and a half and other tracks. Absolutely. We're going to listen to Mike Herman Jr. on the spotter. He uh, on the uh, on the restart. He's the spotter for Chris Busher. Who has now led 18 laps. Well, his job's pretty easy right now, Jeff. <laughs> go, yeah, go, go. Don't spin the tires. That's, That's right. the number one job. Block that outside. Do not let a car to your outside. But we've seen where Brad Keselowski has been pretty good on the short runs. Busher good on the long runs. We'll see how that plays out. You know how much of that is built into the setup. But if you're Martin Truex, it's, you know, row two right there. You get a big push, get to the uh, first corner right there. If you can get to his outside, you can get him loose, possibly take the lead. 32 cars on the lead lap. It'll be eight laps to go in stage one. Here we go. Keselowski hooked that bottom like I was talking about. As soon as he did, way he took the lead. How about the heads up driving by Martin Truex Jr. to put that block on Kurt Busch as Kurt Busch was going to go to the outside, take him three wide. Well, I thought uh -oh, Martin was going to uh -oh. do exactly what I Tire said. Rub. said he was going to do, and he didn't take it. And then next thing you know, he's looking in the mirror, blocking. We saw the 48 of Alex Bowman right there smoking. He's got a slight tire rub. He went three wide down the back straightaway to get to third. Matt Benedetto on the bottom past Stenhouse with the 21. And here comes Kyle Busch taking it three wide on the bottom. Crossover move McDowell. You watch those cars hook that line. That's what I was talking about. Very hard to do in three and four. If you can get that thing hooking on the bottom, it's almost like sliding onto a rail. And that thing really, really hooks the bottom and you can carry a lot of speed. If you miss, which you can see him doing right here on a few cars, it's a costly mistake. William Byron to fifth. He restarted seventh. Tell you, this 19, Mark Church Jr. Power move around the outside of Alex Bowman. Keep an eye on that tire rub on the 48, but 19 at Truex is really quick right now as he's in the third place. Let's see if he can run down our leaders. Those two Fords of Keselowski and Busher. You know, you talk about hooking that that bottom group. You know, a lot of times, Clint, we go to places and we, as we see Alex Bowman trying to hook it, and that the paint has some grip to it if you can get to it, and that paint is up on the racetrack like in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. But here at this mile and a half, that paint is really not on the racetrack, so you don't hook. The paint, you just got to get as low to that apron as you possibly can without touching the apron. Well, and there's kind of a bump down there, too, and it feels like the track crowns over a little bit. If you miss that and get up on that crown, man, it just takes off to no man's lane. Well, sure. Flexing that muscle again. I love the job this guy's doing. I mean, they're showing some heat on pit road and on the racetrack. Not going to complete the pass. Here comes Keselowski fighting back. Such an aggravating thing right there. Gets that big run. And it also, you know, when you miss that, all right, he dove down there and tried to make the pass. If you don't complete that, there's some scrub on those tires that you wish you didn't take. Right, because to, to commit down there, you're using up more. You're overheating those tires down that bottom lane. For sure.
Kozlowski, a little bobble there. And Busher has a look on the inside. He's going to try. Side jab. And I love how Brad's coming down to do the same thing back to him. This guy can complete the pass. Yeah. I, I love how good Chris Busher's race car is and how he searched for that air to get to the front bumper. <laughs> so does he. <laughs> <laughs> Third place, Bowman, Truex, and Byron. Let's uh, go back to our aerial coverage and show you where we think Alex Bowman got that tire rub. So this is down the back straightaway. Oh, you see William Byron almost try to make it four wide. I don't know if there was contact there, but we think there may have been a tiny bit of contact to the right rear of the 48. Yeah, you know, with this 550 package and the horsepower and that big spoiler, you know, you just, you get such a huge run. I think William Byers like, what do I do with this? What do I do with this? Well, you know, you got to think twice about going four wide there. All right, let's see who gets the stage points. This is the lap. Chris Busher for Roush Fenway Racing. His Ford comes off turn four, and he will win stage one from Brad Keselowski with Truex third, Byron fourth, Bowman fifth, Kyle Larson and Joey Logano. Love it. Great and job, Chris Busch. Awesome. You know the old cat in the hat's happy about that. Chase Elliott, Kurt Busch, and Austin Dillon also pick up stage points. Second career stage win for Busher. The NASCAR Cup Series on Fox is sponsored by GEICO. Save even more when you bundle home and car insurance. Stage one is complete. Chris Buescher, the stage one winner. Now consider this. Before today, in five cup starts at Homestead, Buescher had only spent a total of three laps in a top five position. 
today he wins the stage he's led 23 so far. Wow. <laughs> what a difference of performance. I don't know what that conversation they had in the offseason you were talking about but it worked. Pit road is open here's Regan. Well Chris Buescher obviously still very happy with that race car. The one thing he needs though is for it to take off just a little bit better. It takes a lap or two before it comes in. They don't want to sacrifice the, la the long run to make that happen though. Martin Truex Jr. on the left gear screen. He wants to tear off so he can see out the windshield. That race car's better. The front end is still bouncing too much though. Jamie. William Byron in the 24. He's been good. Not a lot of complaints mentioned getting into his teammate of the 48 but said the car is good. The 48, his teammate Alex Bowman said, I'm just too tight. I can't drive into the corner as well as these other guys. They're going to make an adjustment for that. And the two of Brad Kozlowski, air pressure, wedge adjustment. Said he was on the splitter a little bit, and Brad comes off pit road second. Pretty close uh, Ram race off pit road there. Busher beating Kozlowski. Bowman, Elliott, and Logano all gainers. Byron, Truex, Larson. Chase Elliott. positions. Let's talk to Chris Bush. Yeah. Let's get him on there. Hey, Chris Bush, it's Boyer in the booth. What's up, Boyer? You are, man. How about it? Heck of a run, doing a great job so far. Stage one winner. What do you got for a race car? It looks to me like a hot rod. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, this past all must have treating us good tonight, so everybody's worked uh, really hard to come down here. And I think we all like this track. It's one of my favorite mile and a half we get to come to, so. Uh, pretty neat to be winning laps and, and winning stages here early on. So we're uh, got a lot of race left to do, but we're going to keep at it here. Well, buddy, I, I feel like I'm more excited than you are. <laughs> Maybe that was what I was missing all them years. You're focused, dialed in, keep up the good work. I like what I see, buddy. Yeah, I appreciate it. Did you say it. maybe? Don't act like you're surprised. You're more excited than somebody. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. 84 laps complete. We're getting ready for stage two. Chris Buescher, the leader.
NASCAR Cup Racing on Fox is sponsored by Toyota. Let's go places. And by T-Mobile, now America's largest and fastest 5G network. One to go before we take the green for stage two. Here's what's coming up this week on Race Hub, presented by Wendy's. This week on NASCAR Race Hub, presented by Wendy's, we've got our marching orders and our heading homestead. It's Women's History Month, and we're meeting the ladies who help make NASCAR go round. And Busy nice to have a faster car. you heard the man, don't go anywhere. It's radioactive. That's all this week on NASCAR Race Hub, weeknights 6 p.m. Eastern, only on FS1. I don't know another show that has a favorite segment that's everybody's favorite segment unless you're in it. Oh, it's <laughs> like way more fun this year to be the one laughing at. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because he was Damn. in that show every week. Look at these guys, huh? I love NASCAR that's fans. Commitment. How cool is it to have NASCAR fans back? I was just looking out over the window here at all the fans having fun enjoying this race. And, and then I watched that distance. Thank DoorDash. You. <laughs> Where is this DoorDash and how? Wendy's, man. Wendy's look good. Old Clint up yep. here is hungry. <laughs> how does this happen? Um, if you look behind you, there's some Joe Stone I'm, crab. Can we get Bub the on the radio president, next? Uh, I want Bub on the radio That Al Garcia okay. brought for us. Oh. <laughs> Chris Buescher has chosen the inside. We're going to listen to the 48 on this restart. Here they come to the Geico restart zone. Go. You're good, just two wide. Still outside. Clear up behind the two. Clear up behind the two. They're three wide behind you. And big run. Hold the lane. Hold the lane. Hold your lane. You're middle three. Middle three. Clear low. Clear low. Out there tight. Leave the lane out there. Still out there. Nine still at your quarter. I saw four groups of three wide off turn four. And where you don't want to be is that meat and a sandwich. You do not want to be the middle. You heard him saying on that block, make sure you get up tight on the, on your door like that. Get, you get hey. loose, one wiggle, and you're in big trouble. Was that smoke from Keselowski as he came off the corner? Maybe a little tire rub on low pressure? These restarts are pretty crazy, and you can just see how these guys are going for it. I think and what you're seeing there is the movement in the rear ends. It's just on the low air pressure, it gets into the quarter That sidewall could be flexed a little bit, right? Yeah. yeah. What Kyle Busch had a moment. And I'll tell you who, it's got some short run speed right now is Chase Elliott as he takes the lead from Chris Buescher. Chase Elliott has just become the first driver to lead today, not driving a Ford. And that's after 88 laps of this race. Thanks, boys. Pit stock gained him four spots on the pits now he's leading the race championship has come with here the team. comes the five teammate to chase elliott if kyle larson gonna try to get by bush or goes to the inside I'll tell you the one i think was pretty nervous on that restart was rick hendrick because he saw all his <laughs> chevrolets two and three wide racing really hard Now he sees all of his Chevrolet drivers, all four of yeah, the top yeah. six right now. <laughs> exactly, Larry. He went from really nervous to really happy all in about a lap. Jamie? Well, William Byron has uh, lost some spots on pit road the last few stops. This was the team radio after his last stop. We had a little spotter uh, communication in there, but where Byron's pit stall is, uh, he has a clean entry into his stall, but the stall ahead of him is occupied by a car that was coming into the pits later, making his exit difficult. Man, what'd you tell him last night, Jeff? Mike, you know, I, I didn't get invited to the cool guy. Uh, all the cool <laughs> kids got invited to dinner last night. The guy standing next to us went to dinner with him. I, you must have said something to him because these cars are fast. Well, I didn't know how we were going to get a word in if you showed up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, and man. Byron completes the pass on Kozlowski for fourth. Hey, but look at Chris Busch. I'm telling you, this car might not take off as good as some others, but it is fast on the long runs. Could that be air pressure or something like that? When I'm you know, listening to you say that, it's immediately what I thought. 
And the other thing is, is you start to see organizationally cars moving up. You see these Hendrick cars like we're talking about. You start learning things. You know, one car might be a little bit different on air pressure. Through the course of a couple pit stops, now they're all coming together. Hey, man, that 17 was fast. You know Newman's team's asking, where is he out on adjustments? Where is he out on air pressure? Same thing goes for any of these teams. Denny Hamlin into the top 10 for what may be the first time today, just ahead of Austin Dillon. There's Hamlin's day as he worked through an issue with his air conditioning hose, and we're not quite sure what else. <laughs> well, one thing we know, we got to keep Denny Hamlin cooled down because as soon as they got yeah. the air conditioner hose hooked up, boom, he's coming back to the front. Cole Custer right with them, holding 12th. And you're starting to see some shade down in turns one and two. That's going to bring that track temperature down. That's going to bring a little more grip. As that sun goes down, more and more grip's going to change the complexity of this race. Chris Buescher, your leader, over Chase Elliott, Kyle Larson, William Byron, and Brad Keselowski. We're going to take you Fox side by side. Chris Buescher for Jack Roush, the leader, and a Hendrick intramural battle for second. Kyle Larson, William Byron, Chase Elliott in those Chevrolets, 2-3-4. Well, we saw the nine of Chase Elliott just take off on the restart. And when you see a car that has that fast or that much short run speed, it makes you a little bit nervous of what's gonna, what you're going to see in the long run. That's exactly what we're seeing. The nine of Chase Elliott starting to fall back a little bit. Maybe they can make an air pressure adjustment or somehow get that long run speed back in this number nine. Kurt Busch two laps ago was side by side with Joey Logano. He has now completed that pass for eighth and draws down on Alex Bowman just ahead. Martin Truex gonna try and bust up that Hendrick party in the top five. Now here's a car that has great long run speed. He struggles a little bit on the short run, but boy, if this thing stays green, you're gonna see him continue to march forward. Downforce is king on a track like this. First, second, second, and 12th in his last four starts here. Truex. Couple champions here. Struggling back in 18th and 19th. Never expected to see these guys midfield like this. You said struggling. You could hear him struggling to put the throttle down right there. 
I always like listening to the audio in, the, in these cars, when, especially when they're running a the wall. There's an art to it. You can hear him feeding the throttle a little bit more, a little bit more, but you got to be soft with it. And I love that right there. You saw Kyle Busch in the 18 ahead of Kevin Harvick run that bottom groove, shortcut it, but man, you saw how much momentum he lost in the exit. And here's Ryan Blaney. Another of those cars that has neither led a lap nor finished in the top 10 this season, along with DiBenedetto right behind him. And they're in 15th and 16th right now. Yeah, guy ran so well here. Talking about Mark Blaney, but uh, Matt DiBenedetto also, guy that uh, we, we, we expect, you know, there's some big pressure on this guy this year yep. uh, to, to step things up with that 21 car. The 21, a Penske affiliate, along with the three team Penske cars. Yeah, we got, got a little something new this year. It's uh, Dollop Travis Geisler. Competition director over at Penske. Find out what's going on with this Penske Fords. Hey, Travis Geisler, Jeff up in the Fox Sports booth. You got us? What did he say, Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, if you know if you know what he said, can you translate for us? A little, a little technical difficulties there. We'll try him again later. I'll say what I like out. about this point in the race so. you're starting to see people run different lines. The outside, right down on the bottom, we watched, uh, you know, the 18 has been running the outside here. You can see uh, these three cars here with the Joey Logano. He's still out of blocking too. At the end of the day, when you start to see these runs coming from the outside and things like that, you go to the blocks, you've got to be in the mirror. And it's something that you, you hear us talk about at a track like Daytona, Talladega. Trust me, it's an important factor in this as well. Well, now what about Logano? He led the first 12 laps, but here he is just trying to hold on to a spot in the top 10 and that's difficult right now. Well when I said blocking too let me let me go back to that. It's not necessarily just putting a block on it's taking the air off of them. You move up take their line and it takes the air off their car and lose all your momentum and all your mojo. Here comes Kurt Busch still marching forward going to go to the inside. So Back many times last. when you're at this racetrack, you begin a groove, Mike, you be up there just ripping the outside, ripping the lip. Oh, everything's good. Catching this guy, just murdering him a half a second a lap. As soon as you get to him, he pulls up, takes your line, takes the air off your car. Everything's out the window. Come to a complete halt. So Denny Hamlin moves around Logano and into ninth place. Austin Dillon challenging for a spot in the top 10. So, Mike, we've been waiting. We've been talking and building this up about running the fence up top. And it just hasn't been there yet. We've seen some good race cars not having to run up uh, top, but we see Denny Hamlin last time by right on the fence. And I thought when the sun went down, the groove would move lower, but I'm wondering if there's going to be some grip up there at some point in this race. Well, you're talking about up there. There's two up there. There's the top, <laughs> and then there's the next level of commitment of running right on them bar the boards, as they call it. You've got to be right up there. Back to that air bubble. That's where it's at. Now, Truex down in one and two has done just that, Clint. He has been rim riding right up against the wall as Kurt Busch, Chase Elliott. We saw a whole new Kurt Busch last week on the road course at Daytona. I mean, he had an aggression level. Uh, if this was spinal tap, he would have had it turned to 11. I've seen it today as well. He's elbows up with every single lap, uh, pushing hard on these restarts. He's a bear. Man. Well, he, he was leading last week, right? Went through that kink in the middle, <laughs> went into the grass. He was this close, just so close to being on our put it out segment. <laughs> <laughs> but then you see, you know, Brad Keselowski's week, hey, up and down, down and out, down and out, and finally ends up, uh, you know, in the money at the end of the thing. Kurt Busch the same way. Kevin Harvick back to Matt DiBenedetto, 17th. Suarez and Kyle Busch in the picture there. These two right here, here we go. going at it. Fifth place. Clear up, clear up, clear up, clear up. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> and third place. You can see and, and Mark Drex Jr. able to use that block a little bit on that slower car and he had the momentum on his side also easily makes this pass for third place Drex Great. coming. So what happens right there you get in a run you get stalled out running with a car all of a sudden you get that lapper you see it coming you got to time it. Chris Buescher your leader after 109 laps.
Welcome back to the Dixie Vodka 400 on Fox, brought to you by NASCAR's premier partners. Chris Busher is your leader at 114 laps. And to win Clint's money, one of the questions you must answer is which of these six drivers will have the best finish in stage number two? And uh, Clint, I don't see Chris yeah, Busher's name say, anywhere up, hey, on that list. We need another pick. need another driver right there, Chase. Butcher. Chris Butcher is definitely the guy. Who did you pick right there on your pick? Stage uh, two, baby. Stage two, the money is right now. I had Busher, but he somehow. You did not. <laughs> Such a late. Right now, of those six, Chase Elliott is in the highest position. But the man who's tracking Busher down is Martin Truex, and he's one of the quickest cars on the racetrack. Truex went winless on the mile and a half speedways last year for the first time since 2015. I, I was going to say, Mike, I can't even believe I, I'm hearing you say that. I mean, yeah, how I dominant has that team been and that driver? We won like 50 the, the year half. before that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that. This is a driver who once led 392 of 400 laps at Charlotte. Oh, I remember it well. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I would not have well. wanted to be up here in the booth on that race. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. I would have. He was stinking up the show. That's putting it mildly. <laughs> Denny Hamlin continues his move forward. He's in eighth place right now, and his 35-46 is within about a tenth of what the leader's running right now as he battles Chase Elliott. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it's adjustments or the track as that sun starts to set is coming to these Toyotas. And green flag pit stops have begun with Ryan Newman. Uh, Larry says he expects most of the field in in the next three to five laps. Yeah, Mike, it's not about fuel. It's about four fresh tires. And what this will do here in the next two to three laps, it pretty much splits this stage in half. That way you get full advantage of those fresh tires for two runs to the end of stage two. Well, I would think for some of these teams, too, it keeps you from going a lap down. You can take advantage of some of this lap time against the leaders save yourself a lap there Truex now within half a second of the race leaders Ross Chastain on pit road so is Matt DiBenedetto such an important thing right here Jeff on a green flag pit stop very very tricky track is slick tires are wore out can get away from you. That's where all the juice is. Though. If you're going to get it, you got to get it coming on a pit road, but no mistakes. Yeah, you're coming on that high bank onto that flat surface, trying to get it slowed down, and the tires are completely worn out. And by the way, no practice. Austin First Dillon at it. coming in to make his stop. Chase Briscoe needs a stop. He is trailing the rear bumper cover. It's coming loose from his car. And now Harvick on pit road along with Kyle Busch. Regan. Well, Austin Dillon, this car has steadily moved up into the top 10 so far. Last pit stop, they made a big adjustment to the Packer on the front end, which lowers the front end of the race car. He likes it better now. Jamie. Kevin Harvick, he has been so loose today. They've gone down two rounds on the track bar the last two pit stops. He told the team, you guys are saving us. They just haven't been where they wanted to be. Another four-tire stop for the four, and they wipe the grill. And Martin Truex takes the lead for the very first time this season. Didn't think we'd be saying that at race three. It won't be the last. <laughs> Jamie. Chase Elliott said he wanted a tear off. His vision was a little blurred there, had a lot of dirt on the windshield. You see that wedge adjustment there and a four tire stop. The two of Brad Keselowski back in the car has been all right. It's interesting how so many of these cars now have turned to the tight side as Joey Logano is in for service. Denny Hamlin has entered the picture. He's a little bit loose still, so we'll have to keep our eye on that as the sun continues to go down, Regan. Martin Truex Jr. just took the lead with the 19 car. That race car is getting better and better. Early in runs are making good adjustments. He wants more of the same thing. Jamie. William Byron, another adjustment for him. He's gone to the tight side, one of those drivers that was loose early, so they're helping him out. Good setup for this 24 car. Good run today, Regan. Well, Chris Busher in the 17 car just lost the lead as this pit cycle started for him. That race car has been very good until about 10 laps ago. It just got tight on him finally. That's the first thing he said on this radio the entire run long. Kurt Busch coming in side by side with Kyle Larson. Who peels off for his Whoa. pit stall and almost gets tagged there by Eric Jones. Boy, that was close. Very close. Now, 
Truex took the lead, but he did not lead a lap. He took the lead, came around, and then pitted. So yeah. he still hasn't led a lap. And it seemed like a last-second decision in order to come to pit road. Here's Truex. He goes to the high side. Normally, if you're going to pit, you're going to be on the bottom. I don't know if something happened or Especially they just called car. him on the radio immediately, and that was really yeah. close between he and Chris Buescher. Well, here's their radio. Of course, man, you waited too long. Yeah, waited so too long to tell James him. James Small, you know, trying to play a little strategy there, you know, just did not get on the radio soon enough to Mark Truex Jr., but, boy, that was close. Here's Daniel Suarez, who surrendered the lead to make uh, his pit stop. Handing the lead to Bubba Wallace. Suarez is away. And here's Bubba. Bubba's still working the bottom. Doing a little dirt tracking himself down there with those old tires. I mean, we're, we're in the three second range now, Mike, at the end of our green flag run here of how much fall off from new tires to old tires. So Bubba Wallace, the seventh different leader of this race. After a round of green flag pit stops. NASCAR Cup Series on Fox is sponsored by Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Tastes unbelievably delicious. And by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. We're six laps to halfway in Homestead. Let's have a look at where the Coca-Cola family of drivers are. Austin Dillon fifth after green flag pit stops. Newman seventh, Hamlin eighth. Logano twelfth, and Daniel Suarez, who was leading when he pitted, currently 24. I'll tell you what, Jeff. Austin and I use the same barber shop. Now, I don't, man, that high, That's high and tight. <laughs> sure hope they don't get a hold of me with them clippers. <laughs> now, we're going to compare a Kyle Larson stop. He was fourth when he came in compared to Kurt Busch, who was fifth before his stop. Guys, it was not that Kyle Larson's crew had a bad stop. Y'all documented when he had to almost stop to keep from here at Eric Jones. That just threw the whole pit stop off. 
Oh boy, we almost saw disaster right there. Chase Elliott did a big slide right up in front of Brad Keselowski. Woo, that was a heck of a save. So you see the nine of Chase Elliott trying to go three wide. He's got to now slide up. Whoa. And the back just came around, boy. Brad Keselowski yep. did him, did a, him huge a favor. favor. <laughs> that was uh that was a lot. That was a wreck. It just didn't happen. That's what that was. Look how sideways the nine is there. I, I, I he mean, finally gathers it in. The slightest bit more contact from that two car, and that nine's going all the way around. Heads up move by Kislaski because that that not only would have taken the nine possibly out of this race, it might have caught him up in it also. Too early for that. That's right. If he was to hit him, nine's in the fence right in your lap. It's going to ruin your day. Didn't so tell you in a very good situation. I'll tell you whose day is not being ruined right now. The, you, you saw the 19 get to pit road a little bit sooner than Chris Buescher. And, man, that, that gap has just been up to fill. He's two and a half seconds up because of that sequence. Yeah, Truex is now officially out front for eight laps. Take a look at the USAA biggest movers since the restart. Back uh, about lap 85. Austin Dillon up 11. Eric Almirola up 10. Ross Chastain and Kurt Busch up eight. And this is a perfect example of guys that came to pit road early. Those that came a couple, two, three laps early, like Austin Dillon, that, that you had the fresher tires before others got on pit road. I told you, three seconds of a difference. That's how you make up six and eight and ten you know, seconds on somebody. Now we'll have to see, can they maintain? Can they hold on to that? Because now their tires are going to go away sooner. So then, Larry, explain for us the strategy of, say, a Daniel Suarez or a Bubba Wallace of stretching it out just as long as you can and waiting to stop. Yeah, Mike, you're so close to going a lap down before the pit stops and you know if you just pit with the leaders you're just going to be way behind what they were hoping to do Mike is stay out there and catch a caution and then they make up a ton of ground because they're going to pit but everybody else is going to pit again so it's a bit of a gamble the trends show you that this stage is normally a long green run To Larry's point, caution free now for the last 54 laps. Well, that's due to good heads up driving. I mean, we saw it with this car right here, the nine and the two. That nine was out of control, slid up in front of that two. Had that two not have given him that lap or, or that, that position, that would have been a caution that we're talking about. And they're back at it, this time for 11th place. That's Chase Elliott saying, hey, man, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I appreciate it. Exactly right. I tell you what, they're going to tighten up that nine car, Chase Elliott. That car is super sideways and loose. Kevin Harvick right there in 13th. And Ryan Newman grabs a couple of spots there to seventh. He but was uh, the first to make a green flag pit stop. Exactly. I, I expect, I mean, that car is good. Don't get me wrong. They tried to do this, get some track position. But I do think it's going to you know, start to, to kind of work against him here as we see the 5 and the 11 with fresher tires coming by. Yeah, he started that green flag pit cycle. He pitted in lap 117. So, yeah, to the guys that pitted four or five laps after him, it's going to start to show up now. Well, Newman was 11th before pit stops, and here he is racing for 7th. So that strategy has worked to this point. Well, yeah, you're looking for the net gain, right? Let's see what happens at the end of this stage. Great. It showed you really good right there, a snapshot of the running the bottom, the difference in the momentum that Kyle Larson had on him when he came down that front straightaway off of the top. You catch him in the middle, and then they eat your lunch down the straightaway. I do not miss this, Jeff. That's one thing <laughs> trying to I pass, do not right? miss. You know, he and that I, six car is the hardest car in the business. Right. Ryan, Ryan and I have had some conversations right here at this racetrack, as a matter of fact. And you know what? I, I'll give him credit. He didn't back down. He said, hey, man, I'm going to race as hard as I can for every position. He does and, it to he, everybody. He, and he does it to everybody. He's consistent. He was asked about that. And Ryan said, he says, he's in the six. He says, I've heard he's a tough one to pass. <laughs> That's so good. 
You know, I, you pointed it out. I think this track is starting to cool down and the grip level's changing, the balance of the cars is changing. Example I'm going to give you, Brad Keselowski in that two car, remember, led 47 laps earlier, now outside the top 10. Joey Logano's back in 14th, Ryan Blaney back in 16th. So definitely, I think the track is changing and they're not making the changes they need to make to keep up with the track. No, Larry, and drivers that we thought would be factors here up on the high side. Tyler Reddick is 22nd. Christopher Bell uh, is 24th. There are a couple others uh, in that category that like to run the high side, but just, just have not spent much time in the top 10 today. However, 127 laps to go and a lot can happen. Martin Truex, your leader, as we take you Fox side by side. Sixteen to go in stage two. If you're trying to win some of Clint's money, you're guessing which manufacturer will win stage two. I'm always trying to win some of Clint's money. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, that's not who I thought it was going to be. That busher, it was strong, 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 and he still is putting laying down some really good lap times. But holy cow, did Martin Truex Jr. come in on this Toyota? It's going to be interesting to see what happens here at the end of the stage. Get them in. 10,000 on the line, everybody. Stage two, Fox Bet app free. Well, you have every make in the top three. Truex in a Toyota, Bushers Ford, and Byron in a Camaro. I've been wanting to set parity. I, I like what I see here. Different teams up front. We're seeing a lot of things that are a sign of good when we go on to these other racetracks throughout the season. In fifth place, Austin Dillon, Regan. Well, a good move on the pit stop there, as you guys documented, Mike, to move him up five positions. He was running 10th. They short pitted, but that car has held on for him with those five positions. He told me when he got in, watch our race car when it gets dark out. That's when he thought this race car would be its best. Last year, the end of the race, very fast with that three car. Good day for Austin Dillon. Yeah, I mean, if you look at you know how much earlier he came in than the cars that he's been racing around. I mean, he's holding steady. Other than our leader Truex and maybe Busher, he's right there with the best cars. And if I was going to look at an RCR team going into Homestead, I'm thinking Reddick, Tyler Reddick in the eight car. Shouldn't have turned my shoulder on on that three of of Austin Dillon for sure. Reddick is in 21st. He's been running that high line all day, but 
without great effect. So the sun is starting to set over uh, out over turn number one here in Homestead. 120 laps to go. Yeah, reach for that volume now. Not there. Caution's out for Corey LaJoy. Big plume of smoke as he went off into turn number three. He gets it down to the track apron pretty quickly. And we'll bring it to pit road. Jeff, I sure hope Crank It Up doesn't end up being the best segment for the fans. <laughs> it's not going to look good for our job security. <laughs> we can't let that thing take over, all right? Oh, hey, man, I, I love hearing all those sounds. It's way cool. I love the radio chatter. That's my favorite part about it, especially when we're coming down to the end of this stage like that. You hear them spotters. You hear the crew chiefs a couple of times saying you know, the importance of getting those stage points. See some quick adjustments happening to those tires on pit row. These guys are going to have a short run to the end of stage two. Very important right here, though. Tracks changing, long run right there. Got to make some adjustments here. Those are going to make the pit stops longer. A lot of things to weigh out here in this pit. Looks like they even switched up the sets here on the 11. Six laps to go here in stage two. Working the fourth caution flag of the day with Martin Truex, the leader. Millions of kids nationwide are without their normal access to sports and play because of COVID-19. Fox Sports and Good Sports are restoring play, donating brand new gear, including nearly $100,000 worth of equipment from Good Sports to restore play for programs in need in the Miami air, uh, area. You can help. Text PLAY to the number on your screen and help keep kids in the game. Very cool. So important to socially, physically, give those kids an opportunity to get out there and 
play some great sports. Caution flags a break for Ryan Priest, trying to keep his top 10 streak alive. He is the free pass car under this caution. Uh, LaJoy took it straight to the garage where he will join James Davison and Timmy Hill out of the race. Pit roads close, so we'll take a pit stop. You're watching Fox NASCAR. Pit road is open as we get ready for a shootout to end stage two. Regan. Well, the leader of Martin Truex Jr., you see him turning into his pit box right there. That race car is starting to free up some as the track begins to get shaded. The 17 of Chris Buescher, he's on the splitter too early on in the run, makes the race car tight for him right there. Jamie. William Byron lost significant time exiting his pit box the last time they told him he will have an opening. The 43 is not there. It's a four tire stop. The one at Kurt Busch car is so good. Started out better. A little loose, a little tight, a little bit of both. And the 48 of Alex Bowman made an adjustment with wedge and four tires as well. And you see Denny Hamlin. They switched up those tires, got him on the car, and he's good to go. Denny Hamlin picks up five spots. Exiting pit road, Kurt Busch gets one, and Chris Busher loses three. Certainly going to dampen his chance to uh, to win this stage. So now it's going to be a shootout. Now you're going to have Truex and Hamlin, who started this race last, had to go to the rear. He's found his way to his front. Who do you like? I like somebody in the second row. I, I really think that these guys that have great short run, like a Chris Buescher, I think his car's a little bit better in the shorter run. I think he could actually uh, challenge these guys. I, I think you heard about them talking about they're on the splitter on the short run. It's going to get very aggressive. Second row, Martin Truex Jr. is the guy. It's going to be there. He's on the point. He's going to keep it there. Martin Truex Jr. We'll see. It's on. <laughs> and it'll be a shootout to end stage two. So how do you make the best NASCAR season even better? Grab the Fox Sports app. Exclusive content, in-car cameras, all the Bob Pockris you could ever want with news and social feeds for your favorite drivers. Download the app. It's the go-to app for NASCAR fans all season long. Well, and now I'm seeing them where they came off pit road. My, my guy Busher's gonna be in the third row, not the second yep. row, so I might have to go back to that second row. Yeah, he came out fifth. I can't believe he went fishing on that boat right there in the lake and found a Tom Brady jersey. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> Through the magic of television. He didn't know right. Tom Brady's everywhere. <laughs> I hope I didn't make him mad breaking his trophy. So Busher will restart fifth. Uh, we'll get you some craggle. 
if you watch the Lego movie, that's uh, the crazy glue. You can fix this. I know you can. It's all your. It's going to take a lot of it. Mike. Jeff knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> of course. Money on the line here. A lot of stage points. I think it's going to get rough. Elbows up for sure. <laughs> so we talk about the drop off on uh, as tires wear. Look at Martin Truex's lap times in that last green flag run. I mean, you know, look at how much now. Now he's a guy that doesn't take off as good does, but he also doesn't fall off as much, but it's still what almost three seconds. And mind you, that's the leader. He's in the cleanest air running in the lead. That fall off is even worse as a, you know, 15th, 20th place car back there in a the pack. Well, now, we said Busher was starting the third row, but he might not due That's to the it. choose rule. Good point. Let's see where they go. Truex, right. the leader, elects outside. Hamlin inside. Kurt Busch out. They kind of just went inside, outside until they got back to about third or fourth row. This is where it gets very confusing back here for these guys. Again, they're waiting, 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 trying to figure out what, how many cars are in what row. I didn't like if you were ever 20th Jeff you didn't have to do the choose rule if you were ever like 20th land it's busy back there these guys are like parked back here trying to figure out where they're going to go I, I still like the chances of this stage being won from the second row I just I think that the 11 and 19 are good on the long runs but we've seen William Byron be and both uh, Kurt Busch a little bit better on long runs but William Byron very strong on the short runs this is where you're going to see big 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 runs and big blocks the front row, both Toyotas. The second row, both Chevrolets. The third row, a Ford and a Chevy. Same for the fourth and fifth rows. Getting the tires heated up. Need the tires. Big launch right here. 29 cars on the lead lap. This is going to be wild, guys. <laughs> Watch for a lot of three wide, four wide. I'd say all the way around, beginning with when they get to turn one. And we'll continue until they get off of turn four. Truex has chosen the outside. Green flag. Rolling them pretty fast right there, Jeff. I like that idea of rolling fast, just less wheel spin. I do too. At the end of the day, you have the you know you have the push, you have the upper hand being the leader taking it. Harvick charging up to sixth. Uh oh, that's just some of that South Beach sand they put down. It's all good. <laughs> Busher in the middle. How about oh, this? Danny Hamlin coming up in front of his teammate. Here comes the 24. William Byron to the inside. Green and white checkers. Byron. Who picked William Byron? Hmm. Well, who, <laughs> who said they were going to come out of the second row and win this stage? Hmm. I didn't. Uh, I didn't. I yeah. didn't win. <laughs> I didn't win my money there, boys. And, and, and who picked Chevrolet to win stage two? <laughs> William Byron from Charlotte, North Carolina, picks up his fifth stage win.
Welcome back to Homestead Miami Speedway. The Dixie Vodka 400 on Fox. William Byron wins stage number two. Pit Road will be open, but they were just there. Yeah, we got 29 drivers on the lead lap. You may see some of them coming, like there comes Martin Trex Jr. in that 19 car, but most leaders stayed out with only one lap on their tires. Regan? Well, an understandably frustrated Martin Trex Jr. with the end of that stage with his teammate. They have had a debate on the radio, decided to pit. Jay Small said, we're going to pit. Pit made it very decisively. All right, now on that run to the green and white checkered flag, uh, to end the stage. Well, Truex was not happy with what happened. Danny, what kind of move was that? Nice team, man. It's okay. Just note it. We'll know how we can race him now. Denny Hamlin, for his part, said sorry to Martin if I pinched him. He did. <laughs> it wasn't a matter of if. But you brought up something, Clint. I wonder if he got on the splitter. That nose took off on him, and he had to move up high and try to block his teammate Mark Trex Jr. but opened up the door that 24 car let's dial up stage two winner William Byron will it be it's Jeff up in the booth you got us yeah it's important I got you Jeff well buddy great job there I, I actually was calling it because uh, you've been so good on these short runs great job winning stage two but how happy were you when they opened up pit road and a bunch of them stayed out behind you yeah, that's good. I mean, we kind of talked about it under this caution of just, you know, we only ran a couple corners, and with this package, it's probably okay. So I feel good about it. Our car has been handling awesome. Um, credit to Rudy and the guys. So uh, we, we got what we need, I think. So now we got the track position, just got to do it. All right, buddy. Well, that 24 is looking good out front. Good luck the rest of the way. Thanks for talking to us. Thanks, man. So the first driver to pit, Martin Truex, will line up for the restart 18. As William Byron is your stage two winner.
We move to the final stage of today's Dixie Vodka 400 at Homestead Miami Speedway. 107 laps. Now we saw Martin Truex. Uh, only two top 10 cars pitted. Truex and Ryan Blaney. Here is the discussion about the 19's decision to pit. Ran way too many caution laps. Yeah. Well, I don't know. If we go five laps here, we get a caution. It's going to really suck. Yeah, I know. But the other side, boys, it was that gamble versus this. So, I don't know. We'll just have to see how it plays out. Still a long way to go. I'm still trying to figure out whose call that was because at first I thought James Small was saying that maybe Martin wanted to come in. And then when Martin was talking, I was like, mm, maybe James was wanting him to come in. But hey, they, they've done it. They've come down pit road and to Martin's point, they got to have a bunch of green flag laps yeah, now. Yeah. So the Toyota Camry TRD pace car leads the field. Truex will restart 17th and Blaney 18th after those pit stops. Here they come to the Geico restart zone. Byron inside of Hamlin on the break. Kurt Busch is wanting to go to that outside of the 11. Five wide oh. off of turn two. Chris Busher gets loose. Man, what a move by Austin Dillon. Here comes the 19 on those new tires through the middle. Mark Truex Jr. Dang, those tires are huge. Sure are. Kyle Busch loose right in the middle of everybody. Definitely don't want to be in the middle on those restarts. You want to be on the bottom or on the top. Those late dive bombs getting into three. You saw the 42 there. Those are things that it's aggravating, but it's as effective. Uh, uh, hold on, where did Truex start on this restart? He's already up to fifth. 17th. Gosh. 16th. Wow. Anger's got to be worth something. He could tell he was pretty hot at the 11, and then the the, the decision to he was questioning the decision a bit. Harvick. He made up for it. back in the game, boys. Harvick's another one that came on pit road, got four fresh tires, making a lot out of it. Another very quiet day for Kevin Harvick, but here he is in sixth. Man, Kyle Busch just cannot keep it on the bottom. Car washes up, get underneath of him. I bet he's he will be on radioactive, Jeff. <laughs> might take over your new reigning spot. Second place closing up. Kenny Hamlin, Kyle Larson with William Byron out front. Truex and Kurt Busch behind these two. You saw Kyle Larson give a nice push to his teammate William Byron to get him the lead, but it put him in a very difficult position because he had a car to the outside, no air getting to the, to the nose to push that car down. He had to check up early in turn one and lost about two or three car links to the leaders, able to make that back up a little bit. This goes to show you how good Kurt Busch is. He's on older tires versus those newer tires. See how that air trips up over the hood as you get to the rear bumper of the car in front of you. But I mean, Kurt Busch holding off the four tires of Kevin Harvick shows you how strong that one car and Kev, uh, Kurt Busch is today. Yeah, he's been fast all, all year long, very aggressive. I, I tell you, the other thing I saw is his roof flaps. His roof flap was is bleeding a little bit of air right there. That's speed down the straightaways. You can see the four car was definitely sealed down. His was uh, his was up. Here's second place. Larson trying to get to the inside of Denny Hamlin, but as long as Denny's running that that fence, it's going to take a big run or a big slide job from the five Kyle Larson to get this position. And he's got Mark Church Jr. catching up fast. Jamie? So Kyle 
Kyle Larson's in the five. Remember, he has Jimmy Johnson's old crew from last year on the 48. Cliff Daniels, the crew chief. And Cliff told me this is the same car Jimmy ran here with last year. And they weren't very good, so they had to try something new. Well, they leaned on the nine. They have Chase Elliott's setup in there. So far today, it's working better for them than it is for Chase Elliott. True that. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, Chris Buescher has just dropped out of sight. Uh, he was sixth on the restart and he has fallen to 18th. The whole race is flipped. You know, obviously the, the pit cycle and things like that as we went into that stage end, but the track's changing. We said this at the top of the show, as this track transitions into night, cool temperatures, people's, that fits into some team's wheelhouse and it hurts the others. And you're see, starting to see that. I mean, look at the 22 of Logano, he's 24. Well, remember, Busher stayed out. He didn't get tires. And if, if you're going to stay out, you got to get a, a great restart. Mm -hmm. He bobbled in the middle of turns one and two, lost some positions there. Then he's in the middle three and four wide. And this, at that point, you're just going backwards. We've seen some other cars also doing the same thing. Now, second place changes hands. But as it does here, Denny Hamlin proceeded to push Kyle Larson the whole length of the front <laughs> straightaway. That, that, they're buddies, so uh, that, that's no surprise. That's, I bet he was smiling the whole Look at time. This block. Whoa, that, these guys aren't smiling. Ross Chastain puts a big block on Matt DiBenedetto. Yeah, I felt like that was warranted. <laughs> Matt might make radioactive on that one. <laughs> Meanwhile, up front. Sunday drive for uh, William Byron right now in stage three. So how many of you picked Clint's pocket? 106 of you will split almost $100 each. 106 of them got my money. Ka-ching. All 10,000 of it. Oh, man. Hey, Jeff, I need to ride home. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you're the one with all the money giving it away. Hey, I love it. It's so much fun yeah. to be able to do that in that stage two. You notice they don't call it win Jeff and Mike's money. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> You'll learn. I see You'll you learn. guys donated that project to the new guy real <laughs> yeah. quick. I appreciate that. That's right. Joe Gibbs teammates going at it here. I bet you 11 makes this a little bit easier on him to pass him. Maybe Be because of the end of stage two. Or he's going to go down there and find something in the bottom and take off, drive off. But very similar to what we saw when Denny Hamlin lost uh, second place to Kyle Larson. He, you know, he's running a lane or two down through one and two, allowing those guys to get a big run off the top and get a run into the next corner like they are right here in turns three and four. Starting to see a lot more cars running right on the fence. So watch Denny here if he doesn't run the, the top. See how he goes down a little bit lower. Now, now Truex doesn't run as high, but he's still going to get a pretty good run. Maybe not as big of a run as we saw Larson get on Denny Hamlin. Something about Denny's car not allowing him to run that, that higher lane. Well, in one and two, last year we found some grip down there. Just above that bottom seam. Seemed like you could find some juice down there. And then uh, right in the middle of the racetrack, almost just putting your right sides below that seam on the, on the second seam in one and two as well. Three and four, you better be right on the boards. 87 laps to go as night descends on Homestead Miami Speedway. And William Byron continues to hold on to the lead.
82 laps to go in the Dixie Vodka 400 on Fox. And William Byron is legging it out. He's opened up his lead to a second and a half over Kyle Larson. Now some drivers that were a big part of this show earlier have fallen out of the top 20 uh, beginning with our stage one winner Chris Busher. He and Matt DiBenedetto back there 22nd and 23rd. And Joey Logano who started on the front row back in 25th right behind Chase Elliott. And Begging the, for a cost. <laughs> yeah. Begging for Begging a for tires. Yes. Grip. Give me some grip. Now Austin Dillon has been solid all day currently in ninth place. Tyler Reddick foundered earlier running the top group but now he's climbed into the top ten. Well, let's uh, go talk to a guy that has some impact on this the VP of competition Andy Petrie down in the box on pit road. Hey Andy Petrie Jeff up in the booth man you got a copy. Yeah I've got you Jeff. What's up. Well, man, I'll tell you what, those RCR Chevys are. Uh, look like you guys maybe struggled with Reddick a little bit early, made some good pick calls, some adjustments, and, man, it's time to go. Those boys are coming to the front. Tell us what you got. Yeah, the three cars been pretty good the whole race, but, you know, Tyler has really struggled from the start, and it's um, quite frustrating, you know, because obviously this is his best track, and um, just kind of got off on the adjustment, went the wrong way to start with. Then we undid that and started going the right way. And I, I really think the, you know, the sun going behind the clouds, starting to get a little shade on the track, has really paid off. I think it's working in his favor. Yeah, we're watching right. Oh, big move by uh, the three right now down the back straightway. But we've been watching Tyler Reddick. It just seemed like that top groove that he runs so well has not really been the preferred lane. All of a sudden, the sun's going down. I thought it was going to be the opposite. It's going to be daytime where the top came in. Now we're starting to see the top come in during the nighttime or as that sun sets. Yeah, let's keep our fingers crossed that that's what happens uh, because that's really where, you know, Tyler is the best. When he can get up there, you know, within just a little bit of that wall, he can do some, some things other drivers can't. So uh, we just got to keep up with the, you know, with the adjustments. And, and uh, the three car is good, too. So we're, we're, we're optimistic. Absolutely. Well, thanks for talking to us. We appreciate it. Have a great rest of the race. Yeah, thanks, Jim. You too. RCR with two of the five Chevys currently in the top ten. Martin Truex up to second, splitting the Chevys of Byron and Larson. Now back at uh, 14th, Kyle Busch has had a rough day. Starting out, he said the car was not behaving as it did in the sim and things did not get any better. But here he's in the right around the top 15 right now. And Ryan Blaney, one of those cars that pitted with Martin Truex, uh, pitted out of the top 10, but has not been able to advance more than a couple of spots since the restart. Got a little help getting in there. 42 car you can see him pushing down the front straightaway one of the things that you got to do is get off of their bumper before they get in you saw how loose Ryan Blaney got Ooh, Ross Chastain <laughs> trying to jump up in front of the 12 of Ryan Blaney Pick a lane. not twice about it let's move up to seventh place Cole Custer having a, a quiet but a very competent day in seventh place reading. Well Mike that's much like his entire season. It's been quiet but he spent almost all these races inside the top 10 that race car. He needs it freed up a little bit right now. That means the front's not turning that great for him. But what an impressive run for the guy for the driver in his second year. He said that there is much less wow factor for him now this year than what there was last year racing with these cup guys that he's always looked up to. So Custer in seventh and here's Michael McDowell the Daytona 500 winner trying to keep his string of top tens at the start of this season going one of only four drivers that can say that Regan Michael McDowell one of the things he likes the best about his race car is the fact that the front end works better than what he's had here in the past right now that car though is extremely line dependent when he goes up to the top and it's too loose up on top. Oh. Now here's last week's winner surprise winner on the Daytona road course Christopher Bell another one of those rim riders but uh, he's had trouble breaking out of the second 20 
Well, he's somebody that ran so well at this track in the top 10 last week. Regan, tell us what's going on, or last year, tell us what's going on with Christopher, Christopher Bell. Well, Jeff, two stops ago, they came in, made a long stop, didn't change tires. They waited until the stage break to change tires, so they did save a set. They were hoping, much like their teammate Martin Truex Jr., they'd be able to work their way to the front. Not so today. They just can't get the handling on this car to his liking. Yeah, he finished eighth here last year yeah. for uh, Levine Family Racing. And, and, you know, I, I, the only one that's really made these tires work, Clint, is the uh, the 19 of Mark Truex Jr. I thought Harvick had come in and got to He actually was one of those that stayed out. So you got to go all the way back to McDowell in ninth, really, before you see the next guy with fresh tires. 72 laps to go. Today is the most laps William Byron has ever led in one race on a mile-and-a-half speedway. Welcome back to Homestead Miami Speedway, where Ryan Blaney has made contact with Eric Almirola and quite a bit of damage to both cars. Yeah, here's Eric Almirola trying to sort of do a bit of a slide job there, Clint, on the 12 car of Ryan Blaney. He comes up, but, but Ryan has too big of a run, and the 10 just can't stop the momentum, comes up, gets in the left front of the 12 of Blaney, turns him into the wall. Big damage to both of these race cars. I just really think Amarola just thought maybe he was going to cut him a break or something, but yeah, the, I mean, the, 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 the spot just wasn't was there. there. Yeah, no, clearly he was up to his wheel. Now the caution did not come out immediately for the crash. It came out a lap and a half later for debris from that contact. Here's Pit Road, Regan. 
The 19 car, Martin Truex Jr. has worked his way all the way back up to second position. That race car right now needs more grip off of the exit of the corner. He just doesn't want to give up anything on the entry to get that. Jamie. William Byron's led 44 laps already. They asked him if he needs anything. He said, I feel pretty awesome. This car has been great. Just four tires for him. The five, his teammate Kyle Larson says he's just not good on the long runs. They're too loose. And the one of Kurt Busch, a little tight on entry, overdriving turn three. He said it's another four tire stop. Boy, Kyle Larson was racing hard out of his pit. Here we go. Picks up two spots. Under caution for Blaney and Almarola with 66 laps to go in Homestead. Working caution with 64 to go for Ryan Blaney and Eric Almarola, who are now both one lap down but still on track. Denny Hamlin, too fast entering pit road. So he will restart in the back where he started today's race. In the back. So it'll be a lap or two before we get restarted as some more speedy dry is down. So Let's take a look at today's Credit One Bank ones to watch. Well, Mike, here's William Byron in the 24 car. They made a change at Hendrick Motorsports with the crew chief bringing in Rudy Fugel. Past history between William Byron and Rudy Fugel winning a truck race here back in 2016. He's led a bunch of laps here today, but now he's only looking to lead one lap, this final one here today to win. Yeah, Jeff, Kurt Busch may just be one or two adjustments away from being able to win this thing, but he has been in the top five all day long, and that pit crew has been on fire. Can he get his first win here in 21 years? Fellas, fellas, fellas. No, no, no. Look no further than my man Kyle Larson. He's up front. He's leading this race. Nine times he's been a bridesmaid on a mile-and-a-half track. It happens here tonight. Kyle Larson. Well, Clint, that's a great pick, but Martin Truex Jr. just went from 18th to 2nd in that last run with only a half a lap fresher tires. 
I think for sure he's going to be the guy that gets it done in a little bit. Kevin Harvick won here in 2014. He leads all drivers in top fives, top tens, and average finish here. At the end of this race, we're going to be saying, where did he come from? And those are your Credit One Bank ones to watch. Track changed everything. It's This is what I, we love about a track like Homestead, the old surface. These guys are high, wide, and handsome. They're running the outside. It seems like as this place cools off, it just keeps getting better and better and better up there, Jeff. Well, pit road, too, is changing a lot of oh, things. Yeah. Uh, you know, now, now is that time where you have to execute every restart, every pass, and every pit stop perfectly. Let's have a look at our progressive race summary. That's With a 63 to go. fireball right there in the sky. Kyle Larson, the most recent of nine leaders, 18 lead changes, still 28 cars on the lead lap. Six caution flags. Garrett Smithley just got that free pass. Busher and Byron, uh, the two stage winners here so far. 44 laps complete of 107 in the final stage right now. Coming around to the choose zone that uh, V painted in the track just past start finish where each driver gets the opportunity to pick a lane and Larson will take the inside. Tell you what, Jeff, I really like this 19 here. It's like looking, I was looking at the side of this thing. It's it's exactly like looking at your phone with those big letters and everything. So you can see it. <laughs> oh, you know, boy. Everything shows up, that bold print, huh? I can't wait for you to get like, older, man. It's, it's it's your car. It's but built for you. That is definitely something I could see. <laughs> Next Sunday, the best season ever continues. The NASCAR Cup Series heads to Las Vegas. It all starts with race day at 2 Eastern on FS1. Then switch over to Fox for our full pre-race coverage and the green flag at 3 Eastern. Or catch it all on the Fox Sports app. You do have the app, don't you? Does that app come in large print? God, I hope so. <laughs> Me too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Me too. <laughs> Jeff, is it time for this second row to start thinking about peaks to the inside, the three wides? Everything's been pretty cordial right now. Now are we getting to the point where you're going to start seeing some of this? I, I think as the track cools down, track position gets more and more important. So I think you have to take advantage. As we get down to the end of this race, you got to take more risk, right? Risk versus uh, you know, uh, gain. And I, I think now is starting to get, I mean, not quite yet, but it, you never know how many more of these restarts you have coming. So yes, start making those big moves. All right, they'll restart in one lap, Jamie. 61 laps to go. A lot of chatter on the radio about fuel situations. This is what the 24 William Byron's team is thinking. We're running the whole way out. Close to making it on fuel. So there's a possibility of running the whole way out. Hmm. Boy, that gets, that makes some tough decisions, right? Because you want to run hard. You want to try to, you know, make as many passes on these restarts, but then they're going to ask you to try to conserve fuel at the same yeah, time. Those two don't go no. together. You want me to save or race? <laughs> One or the now, other. Honestly, <laughs> with going back racing with 60 to go, the way this pace slows off, based on my fuel numbers, everybody should be able to make it to the end on fuel. We're going racing, Jeff. Larry said we can go. All right. I 28 like it. cars on the lead lap. The question for me is how many of those 27 positions can Denny Hamlin make up? Because he's starting 28th. Well, we've seen him come from the back to the front once already today, but it did take a long way. And it gets harder at the end. You got to remember the first, if your car is set up and you're, you know, to have good balance on your car, it's a lot easier. As everybody, every team gets an opportunity to adjust on their cars, every, that, that window of opportunity gets a lot. Yeah, and they've made those adjustments Oh, yeah, now. certainly closes up a lot. Pace car is in. Toyota Chevy on the front row.
three wide off two. <laughs> Kurt Busch, I got a little nervous. Him and Cole Custer almost made contact. Byron dives to the bottom on Harvick, and here comes Kozlowski around the outside. And the five, and Larson just can't complete this pass on Martin Truex Jr. There's William Byron to the bottom right there. Man, he made up a lot of spots. That car so good on the short runs. Kurt Busch fell back to eighth, but he's pounding up the outside right up against the wall. Look at this battle for the lead. Man, I like how that car hugs that bottom. That's so hard to do in three and four. This baby's going to the front right here with the two, four. So teammate Kyle Larson trying to give a little help to the 24, William, By William Byron to take the lead. I mean, if I'm Trex, I'm just gonna stay real patient right here. My car's really good in the long runs. Yeah, the 24 is really good, the five's good, but I still think that 19 on the longer runs might have a slight edge if he doesn't use up too much of it right here. Well, I think if you're Truex, you didn't have a choice right there. That 24 <laughs> car was strong going to the front, probably a little bit angry over that pit stop hiccup. They just made up for it. Hamlin from the back, plus four, but in heavy traffic. Slow going the back there. It's going to be tough to make up all those spots at this point in the race. 57 to go. That's one way you do it, though. Yep. Just go where they're not. I'll go where they're not. That's exactly right. Anthony Alfredo and 24 changes. And now Chris, Chris Busher. Man, so bummed to see him still not able to get back to the front. End Dumbfounded, really. Issues. I yeah. can't believe that that car's just flipped a switch. And how about Cole Custer in fourth ahead of his teammate? How about Harvick? Kurt Busch going three <laughs> wide through the middle? Oh, well, that's the Kurt Busch we know. <laughs> but you saw the two car completely sideways right there. Just going back to exactly what you said, top of the race, he was on point, fastest car on the track. Now mired back in traffic sideways. And this great battle between these two guys. Two of Keselowski, big slide in the corner. But you see he Whoa. missed right there, missed that bottom. That's the oh, line that gonna... I was talking about, missed. But he's got his hands full. I thought they were wow. going to make contact. As soon as you miss, your front end takes off. You lose all your momentum, got to bail out of the gas. You're in trouble, and that's what you saw right there. Kurt Busch's car owner, Chip Ganassi, is not here this weekend, not allowed to be in the pit area at the <laughs> racetrack by NASCAR for something that happened last weekend. But he tweeted, happy birthday to his hero and mentor, Mario Andretti today. Oh, happy birthday. The man, Mario Andretti. He is the man. One of the coolest things, Mike, we got to do, Jeff and I, as doing that broadcast for the iRacing with Mario on it. It was awesome. So that was cool. great. Such a cool guy. Hero status. Bucket list moment yep. for me. He turns 81 today. Happy birthday. You know, Daniel Suarez led a bit earlier, late in the cycle of green flag pit stops. Here he is at uh, 16th place, Regan. Well, Mike, it's been a battle all day for these guys. We saw that early damage that they've got, but this goes exactly in line with what Daniel told me earlier this morning. He said crew chief Travis Mack is one of the calmest crew chiefs he has ever had on the pit box. It keeps him calm and confident inside the car. Most drivers, you get damaged, you melt down for the rest of the day, but not this team. They've had a solid rebound. Good run for Suarez. Chase Elliott trying to work his way back toward the front. Jamie? Yeah, where's Chase Elliott, right? He's been back there mired. He's in 14th right now. He's been 14th to 18th. Many had him winning this race today. He finished second last year, but simply the car just hasn't been to his liking. Cannot drive into turn three to save my life is what he said earlier. So he's just not happy as many adjustments as they made on it. Yeah. I would literally run out of ink if I had to write down everything that shocked me today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I mean, it's amazing what this race has thrown to us. Well, Kurt Busch restarted fourth, fell back to eighth. He's made it all back up. He's back up uh, to fourth. And here's Kyle Larson making second from Truex. Well, I, I got. I think all of us talked about Larson's chances coming in here at home. Said one of his best racetracks. He loves this place, but it's not necessarily been the kind of day I was expecting for Larson. But right now, when it counts, 50 laps, 52 to go. All of a sudden, we're seeing him get right where we thought he would be. And Michael McDowell, his uh, dream season continues. A win at Daytona in the 500, top 10 on the road course. 
And uh, here he is, top 10 again. I'm super impressed with this run by Michael hey. McDowell. And look who's filling up his review mirror. Never count this guy out. Never nope. count out champion Kyle Busch. He, he can complain about his car all day long and then all of a sudden win the race or come to top five. You oh, if he's out. complaining, there's one thing that's still a constant. It's moving forward. I can promise you that. Well, this is only the 10th lap of this race that Kyle Busch has been in the top 10. If you guys are trying to count Kyle Busch out, I'm not buying in, Mike. It would not happen. He will be there. Regan? Well, Ben B. Sure has been making some great adjustments to that race car. Last pit stop, finally Kyle came on the radio, calm and coolly, and said, okay, it's just a little bit tight entry to where I get onto the gas pedal right now, but we are making gains. I asked Ben earlier in the day, I said, what do you do when somebody like Kyle gets frustrated? He said, I don't care if he gets frustrated with me because ultimately I know he's out there giving it everything he's got every second of the race. Well, he definitely got a earful earlier. <laughs> Good point. Yeah, what Regan tell us? He was going to make radioactive for the next three weeks just on today alone. <laughs> now, older brother Kurt is in the top five, but does he have an issue? All right, you know, I'm just blowing through the tires and we got a loose wheel. It's just already vibrating because I'm overdriving it. What do you guys think about your tires? If the vibration gets worse, bring it to us. Well, I mean, that's the standard, right? If, it, if the vibration gets worse, you know that you got a loose wheel. My question is, you know, you heard him, Kurt, say, hey, look at your video. They can go back and look at the pit stop and know whether they, may, they possibly left one lug nut a little bit loose. We was talking about surprises. Now look at this Cole Custer. We're talking fourth place Cole Custer. For the first part of this race, he was nowhere to be seen. Holding a pretty wheel, my man, Cole Custer. Forty seven laps to go. Larry, is it uh, too early to look at the trends? No, it's not. Not at Homestead Miami Speedway, Mike, because looking back at the last 10 Homestead races, the last caution was right about now, lap 220 with 47 laps to go. But three times in the final 10 laps, and we did have an overtime finish back in 2016. Larry, you're, you look way better than my, like your cartoon character. Yeah, but I'm like you. Is. I got four chins. Man, I know. I, I got, we got to work on that. Little, Where's the artist more, at? You got a little more hair there, I need to though, tip Larry. him a little bit, make it, <laughs> have him make me look like a superhero a little bit, huh? Yeah, that was Lex Luthor. <laughs> oh. Who the hell's Luthor? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Larry. Got to get your head out of the computer every now and then. Quit working on all these sim data and all that. Get in the movie theater, bud. Joey Logano, Christopher Bell, both up front early, now racing for 21st. Still 28 cars on the lead lap. And uh, Ryan Blaney in the free pass position. This has been the best battle on the racetrack for about the last 10 or 12 laps. Seventh place, Michael McDowell trying to hold off Brad Keselowski. If you're Michael McDowell, you won the Daytona 500, you want to prove that was no fluke, and he's proven it here today. I mean, we expect him to run pretty good on the road course last week. He put a decent finish together, but I didn't expect this. This is this is definitely raising the bar for this race team. 45 laps to go. William Byron in command as we take you Fox side by side.
41 laps to go at Homestead Miami Speedway. William Byron with a two second lead on teammate Kyle Larson. Then Martin Truex, Kurt Busch, and Cole Custer. Kurt Busch, who had a vibration, has radioed in that he will pit. And what a shame because he's yes. one of the fastest race cars on the track right now. He's been running down. You see Martin Truex Jr. ahead of him, then Kyle Larson a little bit further up, and then there's your leader in the distance, William Byron. But Clint, we were talking about this during the break, and here he comes to pit road for Kurt Busch. Let's follow him as he enters pit road. Uh, what a shame to have that, that loose wheel. Obviously, that vibration got loose, or it was getting worse. Terrible timing right here at the end of the race. There's nothing you're going to do about it. Hard to make that up. Jamie? Crew Chief Matt McCall on the wall right now. Kurt was trying to hang on to it, but he just said, I'm at the point, guys. I don't like it. It's, it's getting worse. So they told him to come on in. So as we go back up front here to our leader, William Byron, in the 24 car, we're looking at the five car of Kyle Larson. He's been so good at this racetrack. And when he's good here, he's right up on the fence. Clint, we're not seeing that. He's running a little bit lower line. Yeah, definitely running a little bit different line that I'm not really used to and, and honestly don't really like it. The, the thing that I did like right there is that 24 car, the leader, William Byron, got held up in, in lap traffic right there. That is Kyle Larson's opportunity to make up some ground. Now, that being said, he's going to have to have the same troubles when he catches them. But Kyle Larson, when I think of Kyle Larson, I think of somebody that can run that outside line better than most. And so that if that if that line opens up and gives him an opportunity, I feel like he can catch that 24. What he does with him when he gets there, that's a different story. When we've seen his car work a little bit better lower than we've seen in the past, and I'm just wondering, is there something about the balance of that five car for Kyle Larson that's that that doesn't want. You know, he just doesn't lend himself to want to go right up and, and be an inch off the wall. So when I used to look at SMT data, which, Mike, we did all the time, you got somebody like Kyle that stands out at a track like this of running on that fence like we're talking about. All right, what are we going to do? How is he doing this? So I really, really looked into it a lot. What I did see is typically he was tight, really tight with the with the steering and his setup on the race car. So exactly opposite of what you just said, in my opinion, of maybe what he's going on. It might be a little bit loose yeah, and reluctant loose. to get up there because we all know the consequences. Now, how about Martin Truex? He is third. But as you see on our dynamic interval, uh, there he is at third place, three seconds back. Leading our Toyota top performers with Kyle Busch in ninth, Denny Hamlin up to 16th after restarting 28th. Bubba Wallace 21st, Christopher Bell 22nd. Truex losing a bit of ground to the leaders. Oh, maybe a tenth of a second a lap here. What can they do? Yeah, I mean, just you got to search around. You got to really get through lap traffic. I mean, right now, he, he his first goal is he's got to get to second before he can even track down the 24 of William Byron. But it's just really, you know, trying to search, find that place where you can pick up the throttle and get that momentum off the top lane to get the speed down the straightaway. The other thing is very funny to hear you say that, Mike. Right before we talked about the conversation with Larson, we were looking at Martin Truex catching Larson quite a bit a lap. He was a lot faster. That forced Larson to change his line, moved up, took Martin's line, got that error off of him, found what he was doing, and drove off of him from a little bit. And, and believe it or not, Clint, when that happened, not only did we see uh, Martin Truex Jr. start to lose a bit of, of, of time to our leader, we saw Kyle Larson start to gain a little bit Again, more. Again, learned a little bit of what he saw in the mirror, put it to good use. Seventh, eighth, and ninth here, Kozlowski, Bowman, and Newman. This group about 10 seconds off the lead and we hear from pit road the left front wheel was not tight on Kurt Busch's car when so you coming think, in was the right move right move and you think about it right that jack goes down on the left side and and, and that's what the, the speed of the stop all comes from that jack man trying to drop that jack as quickly as possible and a lot of times you'll miss sometimes you'll miss one lug nut right at the end maybe two lug nuts as they drop that left side you didn't have to tell me it was loose either it's such a con you know costly thing you don't want to pit trust me you absolutely don't want to pit you know the repercussions of that as a race car driver but you also know when that baby gets to shaking, it's your butt that's going to hit the wall in it. So Kurt is a lap down, but he's in the free pass position. Tyler Reddick caught that group racing for seventh and uh, made a pass on Newman up into the top nine. 
Now, we, we talked about Larson running the high lane. Tyler Reddick's one of those guys, but he's making it work right now. He is inches off of the wall. Well, it's a commitment, right? You got to be up there. There's we said it. There's the, there's running the top, and then there's running the top. And when you're right up on there on that fence, talking about that air bubble like we were talking earlier, that's a commitment that you have to make. But if you get in a wall, the other thing, the other side of it is you're done for the day. You're going to the pits to fix the damage. Now we saw right there he didn't run the wall. The, the time before that they came through there, and you couldn't have put a sheet of paper between him and yeah. the wall. Couldn't get up there that time because of Cody Ware's lapped car in the uh, top groove. Harvick and Custer teammates Clint you were on this team. How hard is it to battle teammates when right. somebody's got the exact same stuff that you do more or less. Well it, it's always hard to battle a teammate right when you guys are going for a position they deep into a race like this where the money's on the line uh, start to see some cars pitting here. But uh, as you see that and you're going through that it's very difficult you try to be as respectful as possible but at the end of the day he's got the spots you want. What Brad Keselowski and Joy Logano are doing, they got to try something. They're splitting this stage in half. That's what they're doing, 30 and 30. And, and Larry, now my question is, is that going to draw anybody else on the pit road? And if enough people come down pit road, our leader's going to have to come down pit road. Yeah, you, you know, they're, they're looking at analytics, Jeff, and they, they know what this is going to do for them. Again, they were so far back, they knew if they just tried to run this run out, that their only hope is to try something out of the box. How about our leader, Jamie? Well, Jeff, you mentioned him, Rudy Fugel right there. Just to give you a little background, he was the man in the truck series, worked at Kyle Busch Motorsports for eight years, won the championship with Christopher Bell and Eric Jones, won seven times with William Byron. Well, this year, they gave him a promotion. He skipped the Xfinity Series, and now he's sitting on the pit box, just his third race. It's a steep learning curve. But Jeff, he's really been fitting in well with the other crew chiefs. And look at the performance of their race car leading this race right now. And very impressed with the job Rudy Fugel has done coming into Hendrick Motorsports. Now, let's check in on Michael McDowell, currently sixth, talking about fuel mileage. Right now, we are one gallon to the good, one gallon to the good. Long way to go. Take care of your stuff. Away from guys out back. Whole gallon. Whole yeah. gallon. Yeah. I can do a lot with a gallon. <laughs> User up. I mean, back to Larry's point he talked about earlier. Once you get to this stage, you've lost two and a half seconds a lap because the tires fall falling off. You're not using that that gas. You cannot get to the throttle as hard as you'd like to on the exit of these corners. <laughs> it brings these corners. up a bad memory. I think it was here. He told me to save, boy, I was saving, saving more, save more, save more. Well, I saved and we made it to the end, but everybody that pitted beat me. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Happened. Believe it. Now, Jeff, back to your question to me about drawing others. If they've not come now, yeah, they don't not plan coming, on coming. They? They're not coming. That's exactly what I was thinking, Larry. As soon, as soon as I said that and I saw that not many others were coming, they're, they're on their own island right now. Tyler Reddick has made it up to seventh. He's uh, about two seconds behind Michael McDowell. But uh, car length in front of Alex Bowman. And a full second ahead of Ryan Newman in ninth. I tell you what, Kashi comes out here. This this race wow. again would get a whole flip flop and change because of a guy like Tyler Reddick really starting to come on. It's two weeks in a row. That race last week on a, on a road course, completely different racing, just kept flip flopping with those cautions coming out. That late caution at the end with the rain. Boy, what a difference maker that was. Second place closing up. They are now four seconds behind William Byron. But Truex is coming. He is. This car looks good. It just this is one of those cars that just keeps getting better and better on the long runs. Talking about Mark Truex Jr. And if he's going to have a chance, he's got to make quick work of the five car. He's going to have to get around him pretty fast. That's hard to do. That outside line as these tires wear out, that is a preferred line. Trying to make this track as big as possible, not pulling on that wheel. And you can see right there, Clint, it's not going to get done on yeah. the bottom in turns one and two. Now let's go down here to three and four. See Kyle Larson starting to gravitate a little bit more towards the top. It's still not against the wall, but you saw that last time by Mark Trix Jr. ran a little bit lower and was able to gain on the five. Not that time, though. 
Well, it's going to have to happen on the bottom, but it shows you how hard, how difficult that is. Either corner, either end, you kind of have to get regrouped. He's going to go up here, get himself reestablished, get back to him, get to the bumper. Maybe the five car slips up a little bit, give you that another another opportunity, and you got to take it. You could see where I think Kyle Larson is looking in his mirror a lot, listening to the spotter a lot right now, because every time Mark Church Jr. gets close to him, he just starts running his lane. And as you talked about blocking the air, getting to the 19 car. Well, for sure, it's all about that block. You got to do that. And that being said, that's why I'm saying he's got to figure out the bottom, because I promise you he is not going to pass the five ball on the outside. Larson's done a good job of minding the gap to uh, Martin Truex. Harvick up to fourth now. Custer fifth and McDowell has fallen back to sixth, perhaps in fuel saving mode. And you just got to give this guy Kevin Harvick and, and Cole Custer also. But Harvick, I mean, the guy is such a champ and he's always there at the end of the day. You just never count him out. Reminds me so much of Dale Earnhardt. Dale Earnhardt Sr. was one of those guys that you, you could put him a lap down and by the end of the race, he was in the top five. Now Brad just blasted past him. Brad is one lap down on fresh tires as is Joey Logano. They're going fast, but they're not on the That's lead line. Four fresh feel goods right there. Yep. He gone. <laughs> you know, riding with Kevin Harvick in this four car, one thing that has been money today has been that pit crew. Their slowest stop out of six stops, 13.2. Three stops in the 12 second bracket. Wow. He recognized that too on that one of the pit stops. He told him, you boys are keeping us in it. Well, that's Speaking what, of keeping that's them what in quality it. teams do, right? How about this 24 car, Jeff, huh? This is like what this is the 24 I had to race yeah. my whole career right here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I must say, you know, it's pretty cool standing up here and, and seeing those rainbow colors on that 24 car and seeing it out, out front. That's uh, that's a cool sight to see. It has to be. Three leaders all within about two tenths of a second on this last lap. Harvick and Custer just about a tenth off of them. And then Reddick and McDowell a few tenths further back. There's Reddick up on the wall. Yep. Tell you what, he's, he's laying down some, some yeah. fast laps right now. That's exactly. Took the words out of my mouth. Laying really fast lap times down. Slide job here. Whoa. <laughs> Still sliding. It was a literal slide job. Wonder what he learned last night in the finish of that Xfinity race. Not jo nice job by Myatt Snyder on the final restart yeah. uh, to win his first uh, career victory in the Xfinity series. And Reddick was the man he had to beat. We've had this debate so many times about running those Saturday races. What, what, what kind of advantage does it give you? I've actually seen sometimes it be a disadvantage. Sometimes mm -hmm. those cars drive different enough that you fool yourself. Talk, talk to your crew chief, call your crew chief. Hey, man, here's what we got to do to our car on Sunday. And it can actually get you behind. But boy, they, whatever adjustments they've made and the adjustments that Kyler Reddick's made, he, he, he's the fastest car on the track. Now. What you're seeing right there is where I think it's a nothing but a good thing. It takes practice. You've got to be precise and you've got to be on your marks to run that close to the wall. And he had a lot of experience and practice doing that yesterday. They, these other guys didn't, by the way. Hey, Mike and Jeff and Clint, this is no disrespect to anybody, but if we'd have been having a beer before the season started and I said your first three winners are going to be Michael McDowell, Christopher Bell, and potentially William Byron, you would have responded to me with? I would have bet the Quit bank drinking. against that. <laughs> yes, <I'm drinking. laughs> I would have gone broke betting you on that one, Larry. Larry? We would have taken expert away from analyst in your job title <laughs> if you'd come up with that one, I'm afraid. <laughs> Tell you what, if you were right, I'm taking you to the gambling hall. That's yeah. where I'm going. <laughs> yeah. Next week, <laughs> follow Larry around Las yeah. Vegas. Boy, You're probably. right, though. Just the lines that these guys are running. It's the time. We talked about the commitment of running this outside, Jeff. It's time to go. You know, you don't want to do that early in a race because why you're worried about tearing up your car. Now the juice is worth the squeeze. You got to get up there and you got to put the, uh, you know, put yeah, it to good use. Yeah, Pay window's open. There's no hold back now. Now it's just risk. Put all the risk you got to put out there because you got to get it done. 16 to go. Still 25 cars on the lead lap back to Anthony Alfredo. Kozlowski in the free pass spot as they battle for 13th here. Wait. Daniel Suarez getting a front row 
shot of this battle and ahead of them. These two guys just keep doing the crossover, swapping back and forth. Hats off to, to Daniel Suarez and this race team. This is this is a great run for these guys. I mean, this is a tough, tough racetrack. Hey, there's Denny Hamlin. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's funny you said that. Look who the equipment that he's in. No RCR cars had a good day. Three cars fast. The eight cars up here when the money's on the line. Now the 99. Seemed like they got a good program over there. Oh man, here comes Reddick. Talked about that RCR Chevrolet. That baby is flying right now. He learned something last night. And that is, boy, that top groove will work for you late in the evening here. Guys, he was like three tenths of a lap faster that last time by. Early in this race, Tyler Reddick was in serious danger of being lapped. He was running up by the wall, but he wasn't going anywhere. He is now, but <laughs> it's that, you know, the track came to him. Yeah. That's exactly what happened. Yeah. And and we've been covering it all night long. I mean, as this has transitioned into night, the difference that it's made in some of these teams and the obstacles that they've had in front of them, the adjustments they've made. Just coming a little bit too late if he doesn't get a caution here, unfortunately. 13 to go. Almirola in front of him, a lap down after the collision uh, with Blaney. Eric Jones has had a rough day already a lap down and now making a late pit stop with 12 to go. Uh, yes, I believe he has a right rear down. That, I think he's been in the wall that last time by and I, I know maybe our leader was in a little bit of traffic but Tyler Reddick was a half a second faster than our leaders. That's a ton. I mean I know he can't make up nine seconds but still man that's that's impressive. He is three seconds back of Truex, the third place car. And we'll show you the gap. Byron up uh, five and a half on Larson. This is that moment. You're coming to 10 to go. You're feeling every vibration. You're hearing everything inside that engine, inside that car. And you know cars are running up high. You're looking at these cars that you're lapping. You know people are up there. You're like, please do not hit the wall. Everybody <laughs> stay off the wall. And no cautions, please. No debris, no nothing. Larson's done a nice job holding Truex off. I, I really thought his Truex closed in on him. Yeah, that, was, that was going to be difficult to keep that 19 car as fast as he was behind him shows you how hard it is and how much that air affects these cars when he moved up adjusted his line took the air off of Martin Truex he was done you saw cars with new tires scooting on past yes <laughs> Cody that Ware scooting on past. yeah speaking of scooting on past <laughs> yeah scooting on up <laughs> it's like not there nine to go and Reddick has chopped another second out of Byron's lead. At this rate, he's going to catch Truex before this is over. I remember very early in his career asking William Byron, whose dad's name is Bill, if he had a nickname. And he instantly shot back. He goes, no, do I need one? <laughs> I go, well, no, I don't think so. Richard worked for Petty. David worked real well for Pearson. No, you don't need a nickname. I've been watching Tyler Reddick make these laps, and I couldn't help but to think. I know these crew chiefs are watching it on the box. You know, Larry, he's up there. Boyer, get up there. The eight cars going faster than you are. He's catching a half a second a lap. I watched the 19 car made that adjustment. I was being curious to see if who would do that, if the five, if the 19 would try it to make a run up to 24. Now you see the 19 really starting to you know, play with that outside line. I'd be curious if, if Trix, oh, look, same card, Reddick coming. Yep. I think Trix is looking up in his mirror. He sees the eight coming. He's going to put a little more pressure and maybe get a little more aggressive here with the five of Larson. And, you know, you, you got also, you, yeah, you want to be in position to, to, in case something happens, that 24 car to win if you're the, the five of, of Larson. But you also need some points. You need a solid point stay right. here. 
They're going to be three cars under a blanket for second place here. It's going to be interesting to see. So when you catch them, it's so important with the momentum to use it quick. You'll get stalled out very, very easy as he catches these guys battling it out right here. This could be an opportunity to get a two for one. I was getting a slide there. Yeah, you saw Jurek's pull down, got really loose. Tell you what, to your point, Clint, I think Reddick's going to come up here and smoke right See, on by both these guys. Force him to make it. He made a change right there. Now he's tight. I, I would have looked for him to try that outside and get around him. I think he thought the 19 was going to block him. He never did. Lost all of his momentum that I was talking about right there. Now you got to recapture that, regather it up. And he heated those tires up a bit with that slide. Yeah. Well, now, patience. He'll have five laps left to make this work. Look at this big run coming off of turn four. You see Kyle, he, he's trying it right there. It looked to me like he was tight, like you were talking about, Jeff. Got tight, and as it started to catch up, three-quarter mark around the corner, the rear end came out from underneath of him. He was loose. There goes the aid of Reddick to the high side. This is where he's really strong, carries Ooh. that momentum. Getting sideways right there. But you can see he doesn't want to do the crossover because his car is not that good low. He wants that top groove, hoping the 19 gives it to him, and he does. You could just see there the five. He's able to carry so much more speed than the five can up there. Truex could not get alongside Larson. That left room for Reddick, and here he comes. Yes, sir. It's going to be, and there he goes. Here in a second. Ooh, big slide. That didn't work well. I'm so shocked that he's ah. not taking the top lane. He's going to lose that other position to the 19 to Truex, but I thought for sure he would go all the way to the top. Well, I think he was thinking that the, you know, the five was going to move up and block him. Now you see the 19 block, and now, yeah. now the momentum is over. They're not going to give him that uh, chance again. Yeah, Truex made one little slight mistake there by opening up the top. Not going to happen a second time. Good battle here, though. It's fun to watch. See how much Truex had to back up his entry. I just wonder if his car is pretty tight, too. He, he just could not carry a lot of speed into the corner. Whoa! Big time loose right there. Boy, it's like it got tight and then jumped sideways. And that shows that it's a perfect example of what we were talking about. It's an art form. It's hard to run that line. It's, it takes a different style of driving, your pickup points, your lifting. Everything is different when you're doing that. Two to go. Byron with a four second lead. His crew chief saying, stay away from that wall. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Stay away from he everything. Could, everything. He couldn't have been further away from it right there. Save me a bunch of fuel. Tyler Reddick for second. Slide job, engage. No, nope. uh, yeah, he made it happen. White flag, one lap to go. Sponsored by Credit One Bank. Did you pick the 24? I may have. Chip shot. <laughs> 23 year old William Byron from Charlotte, North Carolina, came up through Legends cars. The wet, the East series, the truck series, Xfinity, checkered flag. William Byron wins in Homestead, gets his second career win in his 111th start, and his team owner, Rick Hendrick, gets his 264th career win, four wins away from tying Petty Enterprises for the most ever. How about that? Man, what a performance. Showed up when the time was right, without a doubt. Well, we started the season saying expect the unexpected. Best season ever. Boy, it's delivered. <laughs> it has delivered. But that's how we race. That's what we're going to get used to. Get used to winning, boys. Get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> Some excitement right there. I believe that was Rudy Fugel, crew chief. He's so passionate. I remember his wins in the truck series. They're always some of my favorites as a crew chief. The passion that he had and the excitement was awesome. And, and, and just the chemistry and the confidence that these two have in one another, pretty special. 
This kid even does burnouts well. <laughs> See the order of finish on the left of your screen, two Chevys, Truex's Toyota and Harvick. Another top five for Harvick, he's the first Ford. Harvick and McDowell continue their streak of top tens to start the season, while Denny Hamlin does not. Uh, Self-inflicted penalty for too fast entering pit road. And Hamlin rebounded, but only to 11th at the checkered flag. Willie B is a NASCAR Cup Series winner for the second time. Jamie Littles with our winner. William Byron goes from 31st to first, leads 102 laps. Oh my William, gosh. what can you say about the performance of this race team and your crew chief, Rudy Fugel, yeah. who wins for the first time in only three races? Yeah, I mean, that guy has uh, been huge for my career. He's the reason I'm here, and, uh, you know, I, I'm glad we could get him. And uh, he's just awesome. And this whole team did a phenomenal job. Uh, everybody, pit crew, over the wall. Um, extremely blessed. Thanks, God, to for all the things that it takes to get to this level. Uh, great boss and Mr. H, Jeff Gordon, uh, Exalta. This car looks really cool. So I'm just, I, I can't even believe it, honestly. It was a just a really smooth day. And uh, we worked hard in the winter on this track and can't believe it. William, you told me this race was going to be won under the lights on the bottom of the racetrack. How much emphasis did you put on staying off the wall for this race? Yeah, I mean, you had to go the wall at certain times. Three and four was really fast up there. Um, definitely didn't do it as good as the Xfinity cars do it, but I, I used it when I had to, and uh, this car was just awesome. It, it really is a lot of hard work. I think we went to the sim four or five times this off season, and uh, just pays off, man. It's awesome. Congrats. This guy. Congratulations, there he is. Rudy Fugel gets the high five from his driver, Regan. Well, Tyler Reddick comes home in second place. Tyler, we didn't talk about you a lot through the majority of the night, and then all of a sudden at the end, you're on the wall, just riding it as hard as you can up there. A great performance at the end. Yeah, Regan, it was, you know, second place is what we, it's a good night considering how the first two weekends have went, but uh, I need to get this Cheddar Scratch Kitchen uh, Chevy to victory lane, because if I would have, would have gotten uh, a lot of people in America free uh, chicken tenders on Monday night. But uh, yeah, once I really saw how fast we were in clean air at the end there and I saw how fast we were catching everybody, it's beyond frustrating. Just two or three different decisions on a restart would have put me miles ahead and I would have been within reach. So yeah, second's great, but I saw how much faster I was than the, those guys there at the end. So naturally it's frustrating. Thanks Tyler. Byron, Reddick, Truex, Larson, Harvick, your top five. William Byron, third different winner in a row. That complicates the playoff picture, doesn't it? We'll be right back with more from Homestead.